This is by the way. Well, perhaps you've been blessed to see a concert performance of Johann Sebastian Bach's St. Matthew's Passion. It's a lengthy production by soloists and musicians that draws the audience into the drama of those final hours of Jesus' suffering and death. In many performances, the words are all in German, and in some performances, the English translation is printed on an overhead screen. As the story moves to the final moments when Jesus was laid to rest in the tomb, these four words appear on the screen. Rest gently, gently rest. How appropriate. Think of how when in the hour we die, we will gently rest knowing we will see Jesus again. This is By The Way. Hey, good morning to you. It's three minutes past the hour of six o'clock here on this Friday morning. I'm Sam Scott. Glad to have you along here from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI. It's 33 degrees out Sullivan Regional Airport. It's 32 degrees, and let's check in with our weather forecast. KTUI Weather Bug Weather Center for this morning. A clear sky, sunshine today with temperatures near 60. Clear tonight with patchy frost, low 34. Saturday is going to be a sunny day, high 66, partly to mostly cloudy, showers likely, maybe a thunderstorm Saturday night, breezy, winds guns to 30 miles per hour, the low 48. Mostly sunny, can't rule out a shower Sunday, the high 74, sunny Monday, high 76. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you, Jim Rinaldi. Again, 33 degrees here at the studios, 32 out at the airport. And sunrise will be at 643 this morning. Sunset at 731. Day length, 12 hours, 48 minutes today. And on this fifth day of April 1988, we had a record high of 91 degrees. 1898, we had the low high of 35 degrees. 1920, our record low was 22, and in 1929, we had a high low of 69 degrees. All right, um, today we have uh, some birthdays, just a couple, Judy White and Grayson Camp. I think Grayson's 12 today. And then uh, tomorrow, uh, Daryl Dunn. Daryl's going to be 64 uh, Andy Giebler, Wyatt Holt, Tina Emmendorfer, and Cindy Mar Martin all have birthdays. And then uh, Glenn and Gloria Stack will be celebrating their 61st wedding anniversary tomorrow. And then I have no birthdays or anniversaries for Sunday. So if you have something, uh, give me a call, let me know. You can email me, news at ktui.com. You can text it to me. Five seven three six seven seven one thousand and one. All right, let's see. Today, you can celebrate Accelerate ACL Awareness Among Young Women Day, Bell Bottoms Day. It's First Contact Day, Go for Broke Day, Hospital Admitting Clerks Day, National Caramel Day or Caramel. Um, National Dandelion Day, National Deep Dish Pizza Day, National Flash Drive Day, National Raisin and Spice Bar Day, National Walk to Work Day, Read a Roadmap Day, and Student Government Day. It's also a Red Friday. That means uh, wear something red. Red stands for Remember Everyone Deployed. So, all right. Six and a half minutes past the hour of uh, six o'clock here on this Friday morning. We're going to start things off with news from the USA Radio Network. Stay tuned. USA News, I'm John Schaefer. A federal judge has rejected Donald Trump's plea to dismiss his case involving classified documents. Former President Trump argued that the case should be thrown out under the protection of the Presidential Records Act. However, the judge stated in her ruling that the charges Trump sought to dismiss were not dependent on this statute. 
During a call with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu Thursday, President Biden expressed his concern regarding the humanitarian situation in Gaza. Tal Heinrich, spokesperson for the Prime Minister, stated that the Israeli government is diligently addressing the crisis. We all agree that there has to be minimal civilian suffering, minimal civilian casualties in Gaza, and, and we're working in, in an, taking unprecedented steps to, to reach these goals. President Biden specifically addressed the recent airstrikes that resulted in the deaths of seven World Central Kitchen aid workers, deeming them unacceptable. He urged Israel to initiate negotiations for a ceasefire. The first week of April is proving itself to be true to its reputation as one of the most turbulent periods for tornado activity. Meteorologists have verified the occurrence of over 20 tornadoes across a dozen states this week, with the possibility of more to come. Layoffs are on the horizon for Amazon. USA's Corey Myers has more. Amazon says it's cutting hundreds of jobs in its cloud computing unit, AWS, as part of what they call a strategic shift. The tech team that oversees the actual physical Amazon stores will lose a few hundred people, plus several hundred roles in the AWS sales, marketing, and global service organization. Thieves stole $30 million from a cash storage facility in Silmar, Los Angeles on Easter Sunday. The facility, which serves businesses across Southern California, was targeted by an experienced burglary crew. This is USA News. The inventor and CEO of MyPillow is always looking for ways to solve everyday problems. Have you ever picked up a towel set because it felt really soft in the store? But then when you go to use it, it's not very absorbent. It's basically a towel that's leaving you out to dry. That's why MyPillow has developed the MyPillow towels. Towels that work. I know, it's mind-blowing. Towels that actually dry you. The six-piece towels that includes two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. They come in a variety of colors. And right now, you can receive a six-piece set for only $39.98 with promo code USA. Go to MyPillow.com right now and click on the radio listener special. MyPillow products come with a 10-year warranty and they have a 60-day money-back guarantee. To receive this amazing offer on the six-piece set of MyPillow towels, just go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener special and enter promo code USA or call 800-951-8175. That's MyPillow.com, promo code USA. Meteorologists are forecasting an extremely active hurricane season ahead. Colorado State University researchers anticipate 23 named storms and 11 hurricanes, with five potentially reaching major Category 3 or higher status. The increased activity is attributed to unusually warm waters in the tropical Atlantic and a probable shift to a La Nina climate pattern. The hurricane season begins on June 1st. Bill Clinton plans to publish a memoir titled Citizen, My Life After the White House later this year, recounting his experiences since leaving the presidency. He describes it as a narrative of his 23-plus years post-Oval Office, featuring the stories of individuals who influenced him as he aimed to impact their lives. The book is scheduled for release on November 19th, two weeks following this year's presidential election. Another Alabama hospital plans on stopping all IVF treatments by the end of this year. USA's Ryan Daniels has more. On Wednesday, Mobile Infirmary said it will no longer be able to offer in vitro fertilization services due to litigation concerns surrounding the treatment. This after Alabama's Supreme Court ruling that anyone who destroys frozen embryos can be held liable for wrongful death. Disney Plus is following in the footsteps of its competitor Netflix. In a CNBC interview Thursday, Disney CEO Bob Iger announced that the streaming service will begin implementing measures to curb password sharing beginning this summer. I'm John Schaefer, USA News. Hi, I'm Ronnie Deutsch, and if you or your business owe money to the IRS, I've got great news for you. Tax laws have changed. Billions of dollars are earmarked for IRS Fresh Start programs. And if you qualify, you can literally save tens of thousands of dollars. Listen, I know what you're going through. Call me if you want to speak with a tax attorney or tax professional for free. 800-284-9275. That's 800-284-9275. You deserve extraordinary care close to home. From primary care to advanced specialties right here in Sullivan and access to all that BJC Healthcare has to offer. We're here to provide the care you need. Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital and BJC Healthcare. Care that is comprehensive, 
coordinated, and completely about you. Learn more at MissouriBaptistSullivan.org. Missouri Net News, I'm Marshall Griffin. One chamber down on a nearly $51 billion state budget proposal. The Missouri House has passed a spending plan that would designate $20 million to study the use of natural psychedelics called psychosyllabin and ibogaine. Another piece of the plan includes $125 million to help the state's nursing homes. Marshfield Republican John Black is pleased with the budget items. Nursing homes in the state of Missouri, as many of you know, are in trouble financially. The nursing home rates provided by Missouri Medicaid to the nursing homes have been less than the surrounding states. This budget has added $125 million so the nursing homes in your community continue to function and help the people that really need those services. The proposal now goes to the Senate. Wineries in Missouri are allowed to directly ship up to two cases of wine directly to their customers' homes per month. A bill in the Missouri House would allow in-state producers of bourbon and other distilled spirits to do the same. Robert Pagano represents Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits, which distributes alcoholic beverages throughout most of the U.S. and Canada. He testified against the bill during a House committee hearing Wednesday, citing problems with direct shipping from wine producers. A large percentage of the current wine shippers are not shipping in compliance with the current regulations. To add spirits to direct shipping in Missouri is not advice. Supporters, including a bourbon producer in Herman, says they should have the right to sell and ship their products to customers instead of relying solely on sales at their gift shops. A vote on the bill hasn't happened yet. And the National Weather Service has issued a freeze warning through 8 o'clock this morning for parts of central, north central, northeast, and northwest Missouri. Sub-freezing temps of 29 to 32 degrees are expected. A frost advisory is also in effect for parts of central, western, and southwest Missouri until 8 a.m. Temperatures are expected to range between 34 and 32 degrees. You can find news online anytime at MissouriNet.com. This is MissouriNet. Hi, I'm E.J. Williams. Each year, millions of animals are abandoned, and more than a million are euthanized before they can be rescued. Organizations like American Humane are working to harness the healing power of the human-animal bond as animals can be trained as life-saving service and therapy dogs to help veterans, the elderly, and children with special needs to overcome the obstacles of everyday life. To find out how you can help give animals and the people they help a new leash on life, please visit AmericanHumane.org. Not all people are the same. And yet, when we visit the doctor, our treatments don't look that different. Why is that? Because we just don't have enough information to do it better. By gathering health data from one million people, our country's best researchers will be able to develop treatments that are as unique and complex as we are. With this new information, doctors will have a better understanding of disease so they can innovate the next great breakthroughs in medicine. Learn more at joinallofus.org. Can schedule the next execution soon. Anthony Morbeth reports. Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey is requesting that the state Supreme Court schedule an execution date for Christopher Collings. He abducted, raped, and murdered a nine-year-old girl in southwest Missouri's Stella in 2007. Afterward, he threw the victim's body in a sinkhole in nearby Powell. He also burned the rope he used to strangle the girl, the clothing he wore during the attack, and his blood-stained mattress. If the Missouri Supreme Court chooses to issue an execution warrant, the date will be set within 90 and 100 20 days from the order. Anthony Morabeth, Missouri Nat. A housing and substance use disorder service provider is expanding in St. Louis. Haven Recovery is investing more than $2.6 million and is creating 10 new jobs. And the Missouri House has passed a bill that aims to improve government efficiency. The bill from Kate Gerardo, Republican John Voss, would simplify the contract negotiation process by allowing for post award negotiations with the lowest and best responsive vendor. This is Missouri Net. Do you have a guy? Like your dad or grandpa had a guy. Something broke around the house you couldn't fix, Gramps would say, call my guy. He probably drove an old blue pickup, big tool chest in the back, decades of calluses on strong hands, name on his shirt like Don or Ed or Buddy. He just always seemed to know the best way to fix any problem. That's why grandpa trusted him. There's not many of those guys around today, and no wonder, between taxes and technology, insurance and licensing, it's hard to be that guy and be competitive. Well, that's why this company started. We love what we do, and we still want to be that guy. Independent technicians, generations of combined experience, all joined together as one powerful team. Strength in numbers, you know? 
If you're ever stuck with a broken furnace or air conditioner, now you've got a guy. We're Level 9, heating and cooling. Level 9, HVAC.com. The Missouri State Highway Patrol reported a fatal accident in Newton County at 1.22 p.m. yesterday on Ibex Road, one and a half miles northwest of Neosho. 57-year-old George M. Owens of Neosho was driving a 2010 Ford F-150, traveled off the right side of the roadway, struck the ditch and a fence, and then overturned. 57-year-old George Owens of Neosho was pronounced deceased at the scene by the Newton County Coroner. The Highway Patrol made an arrest in Phelps County at 6.01 p.m. yesterday. 20-year-old Dennis R. Hatley of Springfield was arrested for DWI drugs, failure to display valid plates. He was booked and released. On Wednesday, March 27th, Phelps County deputies responded to the 18,000 block of Private Drive 1213 for a report of domestic assault when they arrived. The deputies found that a 76-year-old male from St. James was the reported victim. He said his grandson shoved him during a verbal confrontation. Suspect information was given. The investigation is ongoing. On Thursday, March 28th, Phelps County deputies responded to the 13,000 block of County Road 2220 for a report of a domestic disturbance. When they arrived, deputies found that a 37-year-old female from St. James was the reporting party. She said that she and a known subject were in a verbal argument. Contact was made with the other party. No further action was taken. On Sunday, March 31st, Phelps County deputies responded to the 10,000 block of County Road 3330 in St. James for a report of a weapons violation. When they arrived, deputies discovered that a 48-year-old male from St. James was the reported victim of a weapons violation. He said his neighbor pointed a gun at him. As a result of this call, 72-year-old Jerry Turner of St. James was arrested on charges of assault second degree and unlawful use of a firearm. Turner was incarcerated at the Phelps County Jail. On Monday, April 1st, deputies responded to the Phelps County Sheriff's Department for a report of animals at large. The victim, a 28-year-old male from St. James, stated that his neighbor's cows had been destroying his fence. Suspect information was provided. The investigation is ongoing. The St. James Fire Protection District responded to 70 total calls for service for the month of March. 19 motor vehicle accidents with injuries, 18 grass or natural cover fires, EMS assists were 11, 6 structure fires, 4 gas leak or carbon monoxide, 4 fire alarms sounding, 4 smoke odor investigations, 3 vehicle fires, and 1 dumpster fire. Roads that are still closed in Franklin County as of 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Bucklick Creek Road in the New Haven area closed between 4202 Bucklick Creek Road and 4267 Bucklick Creek Road due to a culvert pipe collapsing. It will be closed until further notice. And Wheeler Road in the Gerald area uh, closest to 1918 Wheeler Road. It is closed due to a culvert washing out. The Missouri State Highway Patrol reminds boaters to get boating education before hitting the water this spring. Since 2005, anyone born after January 1, 1984 must have completed a boater's education course to operate a boat in Missouri. Last year, the Highway Patrol issued Missourians over 22,000 boater education cer certifications. The exam does cost, depending on how you take the course, it is state law that anyone who operates a boat in Missouri who was not born before 1984 must have taken the course. It isn't a skills test like a driver's test. Instead, it just teaches you what you need to know to operate a boat. If you don't comply with the boater safety requirement, you could be fined if you operate a boat in Missouri. You can find out more at mshp.dps.missouri.gov. Grace United Methodist Church in Sullivan is having a barbecue today. It will be from 11 a.m. till 6.30 p.m. All-you-can-eat dine-in for $15.
drive through or carry out $13. They also have hot dog meals for $5. And Grace United Methodist Church is located at 952 North Church Street, right behind the car dealership in Sullivan. There's a gospel hootenanny in Sullivan tonight. It will be at the House of Hope Church at 235 North Clark Street in Sullivan, and it starts at 7 p.m. A love offering will be collected and donated to the House of Hope Carl Duff Ministries. There's an open mic jam session in memory of Larry Laird tomorrow at the Eagles Small Hall. It starts at 5 p.m. It's open to the public. No entry fee. There is a cash bar. The Fraternal Order of Eagles in Sullivan hosting the Camp Hope Poker Run, and that will be tomorrow. Registration at 11 a.m. The ride out will be at noon. Entry fee is $20 per vehicle, card included, $15 to buy an extra card. UTVs, trucks, and motorcycles are welcome. There's a cash prize to the best hand. The Sullivan Encore Music Boosters presenting Music Trivia Night Fundraiser. That's tomorrow night. Doors open at 6. The trivia starts at 6.30 p.m. It's $25 per person. Attendees must be at least 18 years of age, and it's at the Fraternal Order of Eagles. Elizabeth LeCamp's tribute to the troops Vietnam era will be at the Bourbon Area Community Center, and that will be tomorrow. The community center's at 575 Elm Street in Bourbon. Doors open at 1.30. They present the colors at 3 p.m., and then the show begins. Advanced tickets are $15 for veterans and $20 for non-vets. And there's a benefit for the Eminence Area Volunteer Fire Department. Their fire department burnt to the ground, and this uh, benefit will be at Jack's Fork Campground. It will be tomorrow from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m., They have all kinds of activities going on. That is a look at your local news on a Friday. Have a great weekend. I'm Sam Scott. Your 401k is likely one of your most important assets, but it's only one part of a comprehensive retirement strategy. Edward Jones can help you understand how your retirement assets fit into your entire retirement picture so you can work toward meeting your unique retirement goals. Contact me, Donnie Greenwald, your Sullivan Edward Jones Financial Advisor, at number 10, First Community Plaza in Sullivan. Edward Jones, member SIPC. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan is starting a new addiction recovery ministry called Life Issues. It's a biblical approach to the 12 steps, bringing scriptural principles into personal focus and making them come alive for transformational living. Whether you struggle with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, or relationships, you'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through this program. Life Issues will meet weekly on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. at New Testament Baptist Church. You're not alone. To find out more, contact New Testament Baptist Church at 573-468-3334. In recent funeral notices, Michael Joe Burke of St. James passed away Sunday, March 31st at the Phelps Health in Rolla. He was 57. Funeral services will be held at 11 o'clock this morning at the Hudson Funeral Home in Cuba. Burial will be in the Steelville Cemetery. The service will be live streamed starting at 10.55 a.m. on Hudson Funeral Home's Facebook page. Memorials may be given to the American Cancer Society in the name of Michael Burke. Thomas James Mitchell of St. Clair passed away Monday, April 1st at the age of 90. Funeral services will be held at 10 a.m. Saturday at Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Burial will be in the Crestview Memorial Park in St. Clair. Visitation will be held from 3 until 8 p.m. this evening, then again after 9 a.m. on Saturday at Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to Eternal Promises Community Church in St. Clair in the name of Thomas Mitchell. Myra Ann Briggs of Cuba passed away March 31st at the age of 91. Funeral services will be held Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Mizell Funeral Home in Cuba. Interment will be in the Merrimack Hills Cemetery in Cuba. Visitation will be held from 11 a.m. Saturday until the time of services at 1 at the Mizell Funeral Home. If desired, memorials may be made to the Alzheimer's Association or St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church on Forest Park Boulevard in St. Louis. Brian Mark Woodcock of Sullivan passed away at his home Tuesday, March 26th at the age of 67. 
Funeral services will be Saturday at noon at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Cremation has taken place. The Woodcock family will receive friends from 10 a.m. until noon on Saturday at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Memorials to the American Cancer Society would be appreciated in memory of Brian. Wilma Elizabeth Scott of Sullivan passed away Thursday, March 14th at the age of 80. Funeral services will be held Saturday at 4 p.m. at Grace United Methodist Church in Sullivan. An earnment will follow at the IWF Cemetery in Sullivan. Cremation has taken place. Visitation will be from 2 until 4 p.m. prior to the service at Grace United Methodist Church. Memorial contributions in lieu of flowers may be given in Wilma's memory to the backpack program at Grace United Methodist Church and or BJC Hospice of Sullivan. Bailey E. Hartzell of Sullivan passed away Monday, April 1st at Mercy Hospital in St. Louis at the age of 22. Funeral services will be conducted Monday at noon at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Visitation will be from 10 a.m. until noon on Monday at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Memorials to Crohn's and Colitis Foundation in memory of Bailey would be appreciated. Sean Patrick Bemis of Hazelwood passed away Sunday, March 31st at the age of 48. Memorial services will be held Monday at 5 p.m. at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Private committal will be held at a later date. Visitation will be Monday from 3 until 5 p.m. at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to the Franklin County Special Education Co-op in the name of Sean Bemis. Rita K. Moon of Sullivan passed away March 26th in Fenton at the age of 76. Funeral services will be held Monday at 6 p.m. at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Cremation has taken place. The family will receive friends from 4 until 6 p.m. prior to the service at the Eaton Funeral Home. The complete funeral announcements with all the survivors will air with our 8 o'clock expanded edition of KTUI News this morning. Earn 5.51 annual percentage yield on a 7-month CD at Sullivan Bank. Use our CD calculator on SullivanBank.com and see how much you could earn. Experience great rates and a step up in service. We are waiting to greet you with a smile. Annual percentage yield of 5.51 APY is accurate as of December 26, 2023. $1,000 minimum balance required to earn stated APY. Penalty may be imposed for early withdrawal, which will reduce earnings on the account. Interest compounded and credited quarterly. Rate subject to change at any time. Available at all locations. If you or a loved one receive Medicaid benefits, we want to be your provider of choice. Compass Health Network can help with a variety of health care needs, including mental health, primary care, pediatrics, and dental services. We can also help if a family member is having a mental health crisis. Visit our website, compasshealthnetwork.org, to find a location in your area. You deserve the best care available, and we are here for you. Compass Health Network, 844-853-8937. TUI Weather Bug Weather Center for this morning. A clear sky, sunshine today with temperatures near 60. Clear tonight with patchy frost to low 34. Saturday is going to be a sunny day, high 66. Partly to mostly cloudy. Showers likely, maybe a thunderstorm Saturday night. Breezy, winds guns to 30 miles per hour, the low 48. Mostly sunny, can't rule out a shower Sunday, the high 74. Sunny Monday, high 76. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you, Jim. 33 degrees here at the studios of KTUI. It's freezing out at the uh, Sullivan Regional Airport, 32 degrees. And let's see, Judy White and Grayson Camp have birthdays today. Grayson's 12. Um, tomorrow, Daryl Dunn's going to be 64. Andy Giebler, Wyatt Holt, Tina Immendorfer, and Cindy Martin all have birthdays. And Glenn and Gloria Stack celebrating their 61st wedding anniversary. And I have nobody for Sunday. If you know somebody that has a birthday on Sunday, give me a call. 468-5101. Text me at 677-1001. Or uh, email me, news at ktui.com. It's 28 before 7 o'clock. 
and 33 degrees. Bobby D's got sports for you here on KTUI. Stay tuned. Checking out sports on this Friday from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. Cardinals came from behind to win their home opener over the Marlins yesterday. Here's John Rooney and Ricky Horton with the Cardinals recap. With Ricky Horton, I'm John Rooney, and what a great opening day, a thoroughly enjoyable day in downtown St. Louis. The Cardinals came back with five in the seventh to beat the Marlins 8-5. to five. The Opening day ceremony did not disappoint again. The Hall of Famers were on hand, the Clydesdales, and a big crowd as well at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals got a save from Ryan Helsley, who pitched the ninth inning. Good work out of their bullpen in general. Cardinals were out homered in the game, but the Marlins made two costly errors that led to the Cardinals' comeback. Ivan Herrera hit his first Major League home run. He also drove in another in the game where he was a cleanup batter. And some big hits, too. Herrera played well. Mason Wynn played well. Uh, Alec Burleson had a big hit. So did Nolan Gorman doubling in, too. The Cardinals are off today. They'll play tomorrow. And on the mound, it's Steven Matz. Steven Matz, good his last time out. He just needs to keep it going. We'll be on the air at 1220 tomorrow. Ricky will have the lineups at 105. And I'll bring you the first pitch thrown by Steven Matz at 105. The Cardinals won their home opener 8-5 over Miami. Thank you very much, John. We'll have that Cardinals game on Saturday on 102.1 FM starting at 12:20. Blues desperate for points in their fight for a wild card playoff spot. Lost one on the road last night to the Nashville Predators. Here's Alex Ferrario with the Blues recap. Last night, the Blues started a three-game road trip with a must-win matchup against the Nashville Predators. Blues sitting five points out of a playoff spot with the L.A. Kings also in action, and they fall to the Predators 6-3. to three. First period, Roman Yossi scored 31 seconds in at even strength, but the Blues would tie it up there in the first period. Brandon Scott Saad scoring his 26th goal of the season, his sixth goal in his last seven games. Then power plays would happen in the second period. The Blues would go 0 for 3 with 4 shots on goal on their 3 power plays in the second. Nashville would go 2 for 2 on their 2 power plays to take a 3-1 lead. Then an early goal by Nashville made it 4-1 to one in the third period, but the Blues would push back. Jake Neighbors at even strength. Jordan Cairo on the power play to make it a 1 goal deficit with 2 minutes and 15 seconds to play, but then back-to-back -back empty net goals for the Predators capped off a 6-3 loss. Now 40-32-4 on the season and 7 points out of a playoff spot after an LA Kings victory. They'll be back at it on Saturday against the Sharks. 5 o'clock puck drop, 4.30 pregame skate on the St. Louis Blues Radio Network. Thanks a lot, Alex, and we'll have that Blues game on Saturday on 102.1 KTUI-FM. Missouri football landed its first commitment of the 2025 recruiting cycle when consensus four-star quarterback Matt Zollers pledged his commitment to coach Eli Drinkwitz and Tigers Thursday afternoon. A standout signal caller at Spring Ford Area High School in Royersford, Pennsylvania, the four-star prospect is ranked as the 17th best player and third best quarterback in the country per On3.com and is also the top-ranked player in the state of Philadelphia. He had narrowed his list down to four schools in early February before choosing Mizzou over Georgia, Pittsburgh, and Penn State, which is just a three-hour drive from his home. As a junior in 2023, Zollers threw for 2,900 yards, 37 touchdowns, just two interceptions, while rushing for 420 yards and seven more touchdowns. The early signing day period is currently set to start December 20th, which is the earliest he can officially sign with Missouri. However, there are discussions about moving up the early signing period. In the college scoreboard from last night, Mineral Area Baseball split a doubleheader at Three Rivers on Thursday, losing 11-6 and then winning 11-8. State Fair Community College swept a home twin bill with Metropolitan Community College 5-1 and 10-1. Jefferson College softball grabbed both games of a doubleheader from Mobile Area Community College on Thursday afternoon by identical 8-0 scores. MSU West Plains picked up a doubleheader sweep of Mineral Area, winning 7-1 and 2-0. And the UHSP Eutectic softball team lost on the road at Greenville, Illinois, 10-2 and 11-3. College schedule for today in baseball, Florida at Missouri, 6 o'clock. Also 6 o'clock starts for Missouri State at Bradley and Pittsburgh State at Central Missouri. Dallas Christian at College of the Ozarks for a doubleheader at 3. 
UHSP at Columbia College at 1230. Moberly Area Community College at East Central for a doubleheader at noon today. Emporia State at Missouri Western at 6. Hannibal LaGrange at Williams Baptist for a doubleheader at noon. Upper Iowa at Missouri s and at 3 o'clock. St. Louis Community College at St. Charles Community College for two games starting at noon. William Jewell at Umsel. William Woods at Missouri Baptist both 2 o'clock starts. College softball today. Missouri opens up a big series at Arkansas starting at 5 o'clock. Missouri State at Northern Iowa, doubleheader at 2. Kansas at Iowa State at 4 o'clock. Newman at Lincoln University for a doubleheader at 1. Moorhead State at Lindenwood at 3. Missouri Baptist at Williams Baptist for a doubleheader at 2 o'clock. Also 2 o'clock starts for St. Louis Community College at St. Charles and Mission University at UHSP. In outdoor track, Truman State Invitational finishes up today. Hannibal LaGrange is in the Illinois College Open, and Missouri Baptist and UHSP are at the SLU Billiken Invitational. And in golf, Fontbonne men are playing at the Illinois Wesleyan Tournament today and tomorrow. The post-dispatch All-Metro Girls Wrestling Team has been released. Local wrestlers that made the first team include Annalise Obermark, a senior from Washington, who capped her career with back-to-back runner-up finishes in Class 3. Maggie Ortman, a junior from Washington, who won the Class 2 title match at 155 last year, placed third this year. And Dory Richardson from Sullivan, who became the school's first female wrestling champion, winning the Class 1 title this season. Looking at the local scoreboard from yesterday, the game that we did on KTUI, Big Four vs. Conference matchup, Union Wildcats shut out the Sullivan Eagles by a score of 3-0. Pitchers duel through the first three innings. Union broke through with a couple of runs in the fourth off Sullivan A. Drake Gower, went on to the 3-0 victory. Union also won the JV matchup last night 16-4. It was Owensville over Herman, 5-3 in the varsity game. The JVs played to a 2-2 tie. New Haven picked up a win over St. James, 7-4. It was Steelville down in Cuba, 5-1. Pacific taking both games from St. Clair, 6-1 in varsity, 10-3 in the JV. The Union freshman beat Pacific, 10-4. It was Washington JV defeating Fort Zumalt East, 12-6. The Washington freshman with a 10-4 win over Fort Zumalt South. In girls' soccer, Sullivan Lady Eagles, a nice win over Fatima last night, 5-1. Owens will be California 3-0. It was St. Clair over St. James 8-0. Washington played tough against the defending champion Fort Zumalt South. Came up short, though, 4-3 in the varsity matchup. Fort Zumalt South won the JV game 8-0. And at the Windsor Tournament, Pacific takes third place with a 4-0 win over Melville. Spring softball, Plato downs Bourbon 14-2 and Dixon edging Steelville 6-5. In boys golf at the Salem Invitational, Cuba takes first place. St. James was third, Sullivan was fourth. Individually, Jackson Marcy from St. James was second. Paxton Keogh from Cuba was third. Carson Dudley of Sullivan was fourth. Cooper Mell from Cuba was fifth. Easton Purvis from Sullivan ninth. And Isaiah Carrier from St. James finishing in tenth place. Liberty beat Washington in a dual meet last night, 161-198 to on the varsity side. Liberty also won the JV duel, 172-198. to St. Dominic 166, Borgia 171, and O'Fallon Christian 229 in a tri-meet hosted by Borgia at Franklin County Country Club. Sullivan girls track team was at the Glendale girls night out meet. Devea McLean from Sullivan, 29th in the 100-meter hurdles. Ava Hetty was 18th in the 100-meter dash. Mariah Denny was third in the 1600 meters. Carly Head, 30th in the girls 400. Mariah Denny was second in the 800. Hetty was 23rd in the 200. Sullivan girls 4x4 relay team finished 17th. Brianna Mayberry 20th in the pole vault. Mayberry was 26th in the long jump. Caitlin Carpenter was 55th. Hetty was 8th in the triple jump. Carpenter was 38th. In the discus, Ruby Daly was 15th. Melody Broninger was 38th. In the shot put, Alyssa Beers 51st. Daly was 61st. In the javelin, McKinley Peterson 15th. And Peyton Witt was 37th. Sullivan finished 18th as a team at that meet. At the South Callaway JV meet yesterday, Herman girls taking first place. Owensville was fourth. On the boys' side, Owensville finishing third, and Herman was fifth. Looking at the schedule of games around the area today in high school baseball, Bourbon will be at Bell at 4.30. Herman at Rittner for a varsity-only game at 4.15. Capital City at Owensville, a freshman game at 4.30. St. Clair New Haven, that's a rescheduled game from a rainout. Varsity and JV at 4.30. And Owensville JV and Varsity will be at Father Tolton starting at 5 o'clock. Also today, Borgia taking on Blue Valley Southwest at 5 o'clock at the Hollister Rogersville Baseball Festival. Pacific in the Camdenton Tournament taking on East Carter at 315 today. 
Girls soccer coming up tonight. Wright City will be at St. Clair. Varsity and JV at 4.30. Union now playing at Villa Duchenne at 4 o'clock for Varsity and JV. They were originally scheduled to host St. Charles. Uh, St. Charles uh, had something come up and couldn't play tonight, so Union picks up that game at Villa Duchenne. Spring softball tonight. Steelville will be at Plato at 4.30. Bourbon at Grandview. That is a uh, makeup, and that'll be at 4 o'clock. High school track today, Sullivan Boys heading to Springfield for the Hillcrest Invitational. That's your look at sports from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great day, everybody. This is Bobby D. Come join us at our Seidenstruger Nobi Partners Spring Open House April 5th and 6th at our Union dealership and get in the yellow seat. We have event-only specials and you can save big on our John Deere compact tractors. Take advantage of 0% financing for 84 months with zero down. Plus save up to an additional $2,500 on model year 23 compact tractors. Visit SNPartners.com for more information. Offer valid through 4-6-2024. Summer restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Another round of direct cash cattle trade in a light day for cash hog business. Good morning, I'm Megan Grebner with the Brownfield Livestock Market Report. There was another light round of direct cash cattle trade reported Thursday. Deals in Nebraska were at $297 stressed and $189 live. And there were a few deals in Iowa at $188 live, $2 lower than the previous week's weighted averages. Bids surfaced across all major feeding areas, but were well below the asking prices of $186 plus live in the south and $298 plus dressed in the north. The standoff between buyers and sellers could push the majority of the week's business until late in the day Friday. At the Mitchell Livestock Auction in South Dakota, feeder steers 950 to 1,000 pounds or $4 higher. Feeder heifer 750 to 900 pounds or $1 to $4 lower. The USDA says demand was moderate on a lighter supply. Receipts were actually down on the week in the year this week, largely due to the weekend snowstorm. Medium and large one feeder steers 958 to 978 pounds brought 231.60 to $232. Medium and large one feeder heifers 801 to 849 pounds brought 221.85 to $233. Box beef was sharply lower and lower on light demand for solid offerings. Choice down 415 at 297.15. Select close 87 cents lower at 296.05. It is worth noting the choice select spread has narrowed to just a dollar ten. Estimated cattle slaughter was 122,000 head up 6,000 on the weekend down nearly a thousand on the year. Cash hogs closed higher with a light negotiated run. Processors had to get a little more aggressive Thursday afternoon and bid up to move needed numbers. Overall demand has been really strong for U.S. pork on the global market and has found some strength recently on the domestic side. Both have been relatively supportive to prices. However, Thursday's export sales report from the USDA did show a big drop off. Barrows and Gilts at the National Daily Director up $1.19 with a weighted average of 87.23. The Iowa Minnesota up 220 with a weighted average of 88.60. The Western Corn Belt up $1.66 with a weighted average of 88.09. Pork values were sharply higher up 324 at 98.15. Estimated hog slaughter was 491,000 head up 2,000 on the weekend up more than 7,000 on the year. And at the CME, live and feeder cattle were up watching direct business unfold. And lean hog futures ended the day higher, supported by stronger pork values during the session. I'm Megan Grebner for Brownfield. Planters will be rolling through the field soon. Hi, I'm Jody Henke. Whether you're buying new or have old equipment to upgrade, there's new technology for everyone as you're living the country life. Living the country life. Ideas and inspiration for your place in the country. You can find more information on today's topic and from previous shows by visiting us online at livingthecountrylife.com. We'll return to the show after these messages. Whenever you're online, Living the Country Life is there too. Like us on Facebook and exchange tips and ideas with people who share your love for the country way of life. Follow us on Twitter at Small Farming for timely news and information. You can also find us on Instagram and Pinterest. See the latest inspired shot from our readers or add a garden tip to your boards. Living the Country Life has all the ideas for your home acreage. Visit us online at livingthecountrylife.com and find us on social media. If you're looking for new ideas for what to do around your place in the country, register for the Living the Country Life newsletter. Once a week, you'll receive helpful tips in your inbox on a wide variety of seasonal and timely topics, along with so much more. 
Living the country life is for all those people who love to live in the country. Sign up for your free newsletter today by visiting livingthecountrylife.com. Finding a late model used planter is going to require a lot of patience these days. You might be better off upgrading what you already have to make sure your seeding equipment is accurate. Lena Fahm is a marketing manager for John Deere Planters and Seeding Equipment. She says if you have an older John Deere planter from the 2000s, she recommends upgrading to Exact Emerge. So with our Exact Emerge technology, you would be able to run faster with your row unit, be able to have the seed in the right position. You include IRHD, a better depth control. IRHD is individual row hydraulic downforce. So better depth control, better seed to soil contact, and better residue management overall. She says this would also include an upgrade in data and technology with Operation Center. If you're planning on buying new model year 2022 planters and the 8RX tractor are outfitted with exact rate technology. This is for farmers wanting to apply high rates of liquid fertilizer while making as few stops to fill and tender as possible. You would be able to get a factory integrated technology for essentially providing fertilizer at the time of planting or nitrogen at the time of planting. All in an integrated system. We have tanks on our 8RX and then on our planter as well. So fully integrated system with Xactory. When a 2022 planter is paired with the 8RX tractor, the combined liquid capacity climbs to 1,600 gallons. Another factory installed option includes the ability to swap out tires for tracks on the 2022 John Deere 1775 NT planters. Learn more about planter technology at livingthecountrylife.com. I'll see you in the country. Living the Country Life, ideas and inspiration for your place in the country. You can find more information on today's topic, share your tips, and post photos by visiting us online at livingthecountrylife.com. ATUI Weather Bug Weather Center for this morning, a clear sky, sunshine today with temperatures near 60, clear tonight with patchy frost, low 34. Saturday is going to be a sunny day, high 66. Partly to mostly cloudy, showers likely, maybe a thunderstorm Saturday night. Breezy, winds come to 30 miles per hour, the low 48. Mostly sunny, can't rule out a shower Sunday, the high 74. Sunny Monday, high 76. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you, Jim. 33 degrees here at the studios of KTUI. 32 out at Sullivan Regional Airport. Time to go out across our wide Missouri. Across our wide Missouri with Bob Pretty. Listen to show archives, hear about this day in Missouri history, and learn more about the Show Me State by visiting MissouriNet.com today. For more than a half century, women pushed hard in Missouri to get the right to vote. They met with kindly smiles and courteous assurances from members of the legislature, but no success. Their efforts started just after the Civil War. Ladies of the Temperance Societies and other reform organizations gathered in May of 1867 to launch the first suffrage society in the world. There had been other organizations elsewhere that had worked for women's right to vote, but never before had one been formed which had as its only goal female suffrage. That year and every year after that in which the legislature was in session, petitions were represented and seeking the vote for women. But nothing happened for 52 years. That story in a minute. Hi, I'm Bill Pollock, host of Show Me Today. We listened to you, Missouri, and brought you a daily radio show that brings you captivating stories of people, places, and topics around our state. What was lacking in all these years before this was someone with the desire. Now, if you miss a segment or entire show, just download our podcast. A lot of people don't realize that. Subscribe to Show Me Today on Apple or wherever you find your favorite podcasts and add us to your list. Show Me Today. The Missouri Department of Agriculture wants you to know that black vultures can be harmful to livestock operations. Be sure you know the difference between the black vulture and the turkey vulture. Turkey vultures have white feathers across the entire length of their wingspan, while black vultures only have white feathers on the tips of their wings. Turkey vultures fly with their wings in more of a V formation, while black vultures hold their wings in a more straight, horizontal formation. Mitigation resources for your farm can be found on MDA's website at agriculture.mo.gov. That's agriculture.mo.gov. October of 1867, the St. Louis suffrage movement sponsored a massive convention attended by Susan B. Anthony, Julia Ward Howe, the author of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and Phoebe Cousins, among others. In the early 1870s, the Missouri group aligned itself with the National Suffrage Organization. 
In 1872, a major effort was undertaken by Mrs. Frances Minor. Mrs. Minor, whose husband was a prominent attorney of the day, believed she had the right to cast a ballot that November under provisions of the 15th Amendment. That amendment says that no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. Her vote was refused that November, and she and her husband filed suit that went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. The ruling was negative, though, in March of 1875. That signaled the need to seek a new federal constitutional amendment. The effort to make the change through the courts had failed. The Missouri movement was not without benefit elsewhere. A man named J.A. Campbell was in St. Louis in those early days and carefully noted the arguments of the suffragettes. A few years later, J.A. Campbell was elected governor of Wyoming, and there he signed the nation's first suffrage law for women. The movement had its good days and bad days for the next 30 years, but in 1911, it began to pick up strength. New societies were formed, and a Missouri Equal Suffrage Association was assembled. The association attracted other societies, the Farmers Alliance, the State Teachers Association, Prohibitionists, Single Taxers. In 1913, the St. Louis group kicked off a petition campaign asking the legislature to propose a constitutional amendment on which the people, or more properly, the men, could vote. 14,000 signatures were raised in the statewide campaign. Helen Guthrie Miller, one of the leaders of the society, wrote later that she spent six weeks traveling throughout Missouri seeking signatures. She found only a few people interested in signing the petitions. She told of one young clerk in Clark County who said he didn't think women knew enough to vote. She found the best acceptance in college towns, which tended to be a little more liberal, but again the legislature did nothing. So the lady started plans to raise 23,000 signatures on an initiative petition to bypass the legislature. In 1917, the Missouri House passed a bill allowing women to vote. The Senate killed it. But Frederick Gardner, a pro-suffrage man, was in the governor's mansion, and the first bill introduced in the first legislative session in the new capital in 1919 was a bill letting women vote for president. The House passed the proposal 122 to 8, but it languished in the Senate for more than a month. Finally, the issue came up for a vote. Two pro-suffrage senators were at home at the time, but pledged to vote in favor if they could get to Jefferson City. Senator Stark made it from his home in West Line. Senator Gravis stuck at his home in Carothersville. The train schedules were against him, so Democratic National Committee man Edward Goltra set up a special train to get him to Jefferson City. The bill passed, and a week later, it was signed by the governor. Then two months later, Congress passed the Susan B. Anthony Amendment, and the legislature adopted it. They adopted it on this date, the 5th of April, 1919. That was Across Our Wide Missouri with Bob Pretty. To listen to show archives, hear about this day in Missouri history, and learn more about the Show Me State, visit MissouriNet.com. Along the coastline of Maryland's eastern shore, just south of the city of Cambridge, you'll find a small picturesque church that dates to the days well before this country was even born. A walk around the grounds and inside the house of worship will reveal a story that speaks to the faithful generations who have lived and worshipped here. The story is this edition of the American Countryside. I'm Tyne Morgan, host of U.S. Farm Report, the only weekend television show that features some of agriculture's biggest names. From custom commentary from John Phipps to the stories of antique iron with machinery Pete, to a list of more than 30 marketing analysts, our weekly program focuses on the topics that matter most to you. We invite you to join us each weekend for U.S. Farm Report, timely, trusted tradition. Hi, I'm Ag Day host Clinton Griffiths, and I invite you to join me each morning as we cover the nation's food system, from fields of green to orchards of orange and livestock everywhere in between. America runs on agriculture, and here at Ag Day, agriculture is what we do best. Listen as our analysts track the markets, learn about innovations in technology and sustainability, and live the country lifestyle through the eyes of rural America. Join me, Clinton Griffiths, for Ag Day, the country experience. On Maryland's eastern shore, you'll find a church that is older than this country. The church was built on private property sometime in the 1670s or 1680s. We can't really be sure about that. It was established as a Protestant chapel. Dan Dunlap is the priest at Old Trinity Church. At the time, the province of Maryland did not have an established church, but that all changed in 1692, and this became one of the 30 original parishes of the Church of England. Most visitors to this church would say it's small by today's standards, but when you put yourself in the context of the 17th century, 
you view it in a new light. Because it was built of brick, it meant that this church was considered to be the mother church of all worshiping communities in this parish. Its location along the water's edge is picturesque and quite practical by the standards of the time when it was built. We're on the system of the Little Choptank River, and if you will, it was the major highway for the area. In our earliest history, this area was filled with tobacco plantations. And so the best way to transport tobacco would be by boat. And most who attended church here in those early days would have arrived by boat. Attendance has waxed and waned, but there was a noticeable drop around 1776. Things like the American Revolution didn't help because the Church of England, of which this parish was a part, was no longer a popular place to be for American patriots. This church holds a distinction from all others in the country, though. And I'll share it next time as we travel the countryside. Wolford, Maryland. I'm Andrew McRae. I think every farmer faces the challenge of stress during the growing season. You stick a bunch of money in the ground and you just pray the good Lord lets it rain and lets you have a crop. So we actually uh, participate in the NutriTrack program and the CropTrack program where uh, it gives us a lot of peace of mind if in the busy, you know, busy months of the summer when we're bailing hay and we can't get out to every field every week. Uh, we know someone's out there looking after us. Performance driven. Farmer focused. MFA, your whole farm solution. The Missouri Department of Agriculture wants you to know that black vultures can be harmful to livestock operations. Be sure you know the difference between the black vulture and the turkey vulture. Turkey vultures have white feathers across the entire length of their wingspan, while black vultures only have white feathers on the tips of their wings. Turkey vultures fly with their wings in more of a V formation, while black vultures hold their wings in a more straight, horizontal formation. Mitigation resources for your farm can be found on MDA's website at agriculture.mo.gov. That's agriculture.mo.gov. When's the last time you were down at Merrimack Caverns? Well, if you haven't been in a while, why don't you go back? The entire cave is now open, and they're waiting to serve you at Merrimack Caverns. So take the family down. If the family hasn't been, if you've got people coming from out of town, it's a great place to visit. Merrimack Caverns in Stanton, Missouri. Don't forget they've got the zip line, boat rides, camping. It's all there at the cave. Merrimack Caverns, Stanton, Missouri. Be sure to head that way soon. The most important thing is to realize that these fears are actually there in yourself and in your spouse. Many couples experience fear about money. Here's Shanti Feldhahn on Focus on the Family Minute. The fear of men, statistically, was much more likely to be this gut-level worry of, am I going to be able to provide for the family? Huh. Like, this feeling like I'm always going to be on the edge of, of not being able to. And so I'll work a lot of extra hours so the boss sees me as indispensable. Well, guess what? That takes you away from home as a dad, right? So your wife now is going, but we're distant. We're not spending time together. You're missing Johnny's basketball games. And so it triggers what is more likely statistically to be the woman's fear, where a guy is wondering, am I gonna be able to provide? She is more likely to be wondering, are we okay? Learn more about money fears from Shanti today at familyminute.org. We are broadcasting live from the Sullivan Bank studios of KTUI. We are AM 1560 KTUI Sullivan. Pick us up on YouTube and tune in. You can find those links at KTUI.com. 33 degrees. Here's the news. USA News. I'm Ryan Daniels. A half hour, 30 minutes, that's the amount of time President Biden spent on the phone Thursday with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. This as the White House pressures Israel to show just how they will protect civilian lives going forward in Gaza, as well as the lives of humanitarian workers like the ones killed working for World Central Kitchen this week. The results on the ground are woefully insufficient. And unacceptable. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Biden reportedly told Netanyahu he wants to see immediately how Israel plans to improve the situation for the civilians. The White House saying Biden made it clear U.S. foreign policy toward the Israel-Hamas war will be riding on their response. Those hoping to see an alternative to the Trump-Biden rematch from the bipartisan No Labels group are disappointed this week. National Director Joe Cunningham said Thursday they just couldn't find the hero candidate they were looking for. That's where we ran into a bit of trouble is at the end of the day, we weren't able to find 
candidates that we felt had a uh, straightforward path to victory in this. A NASA employee charged in Houston, Texas for carrying out multiple sexual assaults of women over multiple years, using his position at the space agency to gain trust with victims. 27-year-old Eric Sim allegedly also used online dating apps to connect. And investigators say they believe there may be more victims, perhaps even overseas. Meteorologist forecasting an extremely active hurricane season ahead. USA's John Schaefer. Colorado State University researchers anticipate 23 named storms and 11 hurricanes, with five potentially reaching major Category 3 or higher status. The increased activity is attributed to unusually warm water in the tropical Atlantic and a probable shift to a La Nina climate pattern. The hurricane season begins on June 1st. This is USA News. My doctor told me my cholesterol is borderline, so I took control with Garlic Healthy Cholesterol Formula. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's odor and taste free, and Garlic is a world leader in garlic potency. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with Garlic Healthy Cholesterol Formula cholesterol's natural enemy. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. The term natural reference is only the garlic in the product. Use as directed. Hear that? The relaxing sound of ambient music in a yoga class. And if you were here, you'd listen to 15 people taking a deep breath in sync. But you're not here. Because your self-care happens out on the road, riding your motorcycle protected by Progressive. So if you ride, get a quote today and see if you could save with Progressive, America's number one motorcycle insurer, and find inner peace with a different post called Palms on Handlebars. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates not available in all states. 10 to 15 years. That's what prosecutors in Michigan want the convicted parents of school shooter Ethan Crumley to serve in prison. The teen shot up Oxford High School in 2021, killing four of his classmates. Parents, James and Jennifer Crumley, were each found guilty of involuntary manslaughter after they turned a blind eye to their son's mental health problems and left a gun used in the crime unsecured. On Wednesday, prosecutors said they'll ask a judge to sentence them both to 10 to 15 years in prison. Layoffs on the horizon for Amazon. Corey Myers has those details. Amazon says it's cutting hundreds of jobs in its cloud computing unit, AWS, as part of what they call a strategic shift. The tech team that oversees the actual physical Amazon stores will lose a few hundred people, plus several hundred roles in the AWS sales, marketing, and global service organization. The only thing that can ruin the eclipse on April 8th, clouds. And some are expected to show up. Texas and Ohio might not be the best spots thanks to the weather forecast calling for significant cloud cover in those states. Forecasters are optimistic about the northern part of the path of totality with clear skies most likely in northern New England and upstate New York and in Arkansas and Missouri. I'm Ryan Daniels, USA News. Do you have a story to tell? Bring your story to life with audiobooks. Great stories deserve great storytelling. Audiobook Network provides professional voice actors and full production services for every author's manuscript. From narration, production, and editing to distribution, promotion, and sales, Audiobook Network handles everything. If you have a print book, ebook, or even a manuscript, call Audiobook Network now and get our free audiobook guide. 800 734 1229. 800 734 1229. You deserve extraordinary care close to home. From primary care to advanced specialties right here in Sullivan and access to all that BJC Healthcare has to offer. We're here to provide the care you need. Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital and BJC Healthcare. Care that is comprehensive, coordinated, and completely about you. Learn more at MissouriBaptistSullivan.org. Missouri Net News, I'm Marshall Griffin. One chamber down on a nearly $51 billion state budget proposal. The Missouri House has passed the spending plan that would designate $20 million to study the use of natural psychedelics called psychosyllabin and ibogaine. Another piece of the plan includes $125 million to help the state's nursing homes. Marshfield Republican John Black is pleased with the budget items. Nursing homes in the state of Missouri, as many of you know, are in trouble financially. 
the nursing home rates provided by Missouri Medicaid to the nursing homes have been less than the surrounding states. This budget has added $125 million so the nursing homes in your community continue to function and help the people that really need those services. The proposal now goes to the Senate. Wineries in Missouri are allowed to directly ship up to two cases of wine directly to their customers' homes per month. A bill in the Missouri House would allow in-state producers of bourbon and other distilled spirits to do the same. Robert Pagano represents Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits, which distributes alcoholic beverages throughout most of the U.S. and Canada. He testified against the bill during a House committee hearing Wednesday, citing problems with direct shipping from wine producers. A large percentage of the current wine shippers are not shipping in compliance with the current regulations. To add spirits to direct shipping in Missouri is not advised. Supporters, including a bourbon producer in Herman, says they should have the right to sell and ship their products to customers instead of relying solely on sales at their gift shops. A vote on the bill hasn't happened yet. And the National Weather Service has issued a freeze warning through 8 o'clock this morning for parts of central, north central, northeast and northwest Missouri. Sub-freezing temps of 29 to 32 degrees are expected. A frost advisory is also in effect for parts of central, western and southwest Missouri until 8 a.m. Temperatures are expected to range between 34 and 32 degrees. You can find news online anytime at MissouriNet.com. This is MissouriNet. My baby brother, a father. <laughs> Come on, it's time for his nap. Whoa, he can't sleep on his stomach. Babies should always sleep on their backs in a safety-approved crib. And the sleep area should be clear of blankets, toys, and other loose or soft items. It reduces the risk of SIDS. SIDS? You know, sudden infant death syndrome. Guess I need to start studying up on safe sleep for little man here. Being his favorite uncle comes with big responsibilities. For more information, visit safetosleep.nichd.nih.gov. Sponsored by the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. Seven million children suffer from asthma, more than any other chronic disease. Most asthma attacks are caused by allergic reactions to allergens, including those left behind by cockroaches and mice. In fact, 82% of U.S. households contain mouse allergens, and cockroaches are found in up to 98% of urban homes. How can you protect your family? Find out at PestWorld.org. A message from the National Pest Management Association and the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. It could schedule the next execution soon. Anthony Morbeth reports. Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey is requesting that the state Supreme Court schedule an execution date for Christopher Collings. He abducted, raped, and murdered a nine-year-old girl in southwest Missouri's Stella in 2007. Afterward, he threw the victim's body in a sinkhole in nearby Powell. He also burned the rope he used to strangle the girl, the clothing he wore during the attack, and his blood-stained mattress. If the Missouri Supreme Court chooses to issue an execution warrant, the date will be set within 90 and 100 20 days from the order. Anthony Morabeth, Missouri Nat. A housing and substance use disorder service provider is expanding in St. Louis. Haven Recovery is investing more than $2.6 million and is creating 10 new jobs. And the Missouri House has passed a bill that aims to improve government efficiency. The bill from Kate Gerardo, Republican John Voss, would simplify the contract negotiation process by allowing for post award negotiations with the lowest and best responsive vendor. This is Missouri Net. Do you have a guy? Like your dad or grandpa had a guy. Something broke around the house you couldn't fix, Gramps would say, call my guy. He probably drove an old blue pickup, big tool chest in the back, decades of calluses on strong hands, name on his shirt like Don or Ed or Buddy. He just always seemed to know the best way to fix any problem. That's why grandpa trusted him. There's not many of those guys around today, and no wonder, between taxes and technology, insurance and licensing, it's hard to be that guy and be competitive. Well, that's why this company started. We love what we do, and we still want to be that guy. Independent technicians, generations of combined experience, all joined together as one powerful team. Strength in numbers, you know? If you're ever stuck with a broken furnace or air conditioner, now you've got a guy. We're Level 9, heating and cooling. Level 9, HVAC.com. The Missouri State Highway Patrol reported a fatal accident in Newton County at 1.22 p.m. yesterday on Ibex Road, one and a half miles northwest of Neosho. 57-year-old George M. Owens of Neosho was driving a 2010 Ford F-150 traveled off the right side of the roadway, struck the ditch and a fence, and then overturned. 57-year-old George Owens of Neosho was pronounced deceased 
at the scene by the Newton County Coroner. The Highway Patrol made an arrest in Phelps County at 6.01 p.m. yesterday. 20-year-old Dennis R. Hatley of Springfield was arrested for DWI drugs, failure to display valid plates. He was booked and released. On Wednesday, March 27th, Phelps County deputies responded to the 18,000 block of Private Drive 1213 for a report of domestic assault when they arrived. The deputies found that a 76-year-old male from St. James was the reported victim. He said his grandson shoved him during a verbal confrontation. Suspect information was given. The investigation is ongoing. On Thursday, March 28th, Phelps County deputies responded to the 13,000 block of County Road 2220 for a report of a domestic disturbance. When they arrived, deputies found that a 37-year-old female from St. James was the reporting party. She said that she and a known subject were in a verbal argument. Contact was made with the other party. No further action was taken. On Sunday, March 31st, Phelps County deputies responded to the 10,000 block of County Road 3330 in St. James for a report of a weapons violation. When they arrived, deputies discovered that a 48-year-old male from St. James was the reported victim of a weapons violation. He said his neighbor pointed a gun at him. As a result of this call, 72-year-old Jerry Turner of St. James was arrested on charges of assault second degree and unlawful use of a firearm. Turner was incarcerated at the Phelps County Jail. On Monday, April 1st, deputies responded to the Phelps County Sheriff's Department for a report of animals at large. The victim, a 28-year-old male from St. James, stated that his neighbor's cows had been destroying his fence. Suspect information was provided. The investigation is ongoing. The St. James Fire Protection District responded to 70 total calls for service for the month of March. 19 motor vehicle accidents with injuries, 18 grass or natural cover fires, EMS assists were 11, 6 structure fires, 4 gas leak or carbon monoxide, 4 fire alarms sounding, 4 smoke odor investigations, 3 vehicle fires, and 1 dumpster fire. Roads that are still closed in Franklin County as of 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon, Bucklick Creek Road in the New Haven area closed between 4202 Bucklick Creek Road and 4267 Bucklick Creek Road due to a culvert pipe collapsing. It will be closed until further notice. And Wheeler Road in the Gerald area, uh, closest to 1918 Wheeler Road, it is closed due to a culvert washing out. The Missouri State Highway Patrol reminds boaters to get boating education before hitting the water this spring. Since 2005, anyone born after January 1, 1984 must have completed a boater's education course to operate a boat in Missouri. Last year, the Highway Patrol issued Missourians over 22,000 boater education cer certifications. The exam does cost, depending on how you take the course, it is state law that anyone who operates a boat in Missouri who was not born before 1984 must have taken the course. It isn't a skills test like a driver's test. Instead, it just teaches you what you need to know to operate a boat. If you don't comply with the boater safety requirement, you could be fined if you operate a boat in Missouri. You can find out more at mshp.dps.missouri.gov. Grace United Methodist Church in Sullivan is having a barbecue today. It will be from 11 a.m. till 6.30 p.m. All-you-can-eat, dine-in for $15, drive through or carry out $13. They also have hot dog meals for $5. And Grace United Methodist Church is located at 952 North Church Street, right behind the car dealership in Sullivan. There's a gospel hoot nanny in Sullivan tonight. It will be at the House of Hope Church at 235 North Clark Street in Sullivan, and it starts at 7 p.m. A love offering will be collected and donated to the House of Hope Carl Duff Ministries. There's an open mic jam session in memory of Larry Laird tomorrow at the Eagles Small Hall. It starts at 5 p.m. It's open to the public. 
No entry fee, there is a cash bar. The Fraternal Order of Eagles in Sullivan hosting the Camp Hope Poker Run, and that will be tomorrow. Registration at 11 a.m. The ride out will be at noon. Entry fee is $20 per vehicle, card included, $15 to buy an extra card. UTVs, trucks, and motorcycles are welcome. There's a cash prize to the best hand. The Sullivan Encore Music Boosters presenting Music Trivia Night Fundraiser. That's tomorrow night. Doors open at 6. The trivia starts at 6.30 p.m. It's $25 per person. Attendees must be at least 18 years of age, and it's at the Fraternal Order of Eagles. Elizabeth LeCamp's tribute to the troops Vietnam era will be at the Bourbon Area Community Center, and that will be tomorrow. The community center's at 575 Elm Street in Bourbon. Doors open at 1.30. They present the colors at 3 p.m., and then the show begins. Advanced tickets are $15 for veterans and $20 for non-vets. And there's a benefit for the Eminence Area Volunteer Fire Department. Their fire department burnt to the ground, and this uh, benefit will be at Jack's Fork Campground. It will be tomorrow from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. They have all kinds of activities going on. That is a look at your local news on a Friday. Have a great weekend. I'm Sam Scott. Come join us at our Seidenstruger Nobi Partners Spring Open House April 5th and 6th at our Union dealership and get in the yellow seat. We have event-only specials and you can save big on our John Deere compact tractors. Take advantage of 0% financing for 84 months with zero down. Plus save up to an additional $2,500 on model year 23 compact tractors. Visit SNPartners.com for more information. Offer valid through 4-6-2024. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Whether you love them or can't stand them, surprises are a part of life. Hi, I'm Donnie Greenwald, your Sullivan Edward Jones Financial Advisor, and I can help get you ready for whatever life throws at you, even the welcome surprises. As your needs change, we can change what you need to do to help you end up where you want to be. And while there is never a good time to experience unexpected costs, we can work together to help make them feel a little less unexpected. Call me at 573-468-6046 or visit edwardjones.com to get started today. Edward Jones, member SIPC. In recent funeral notices, Michael Joe Burke of St. James passed away Sunday, March 31st at the Phelps Health in Rolla. He was 57. Funeral services will be held at 11 o'clock this morning at the Hudson Funeral Home in Cuba. Burial will be in the Steelville Cemetery. The service will be live streamed starting at 10.55 a.m. on Hudson Funeral Homes. Facebook page. Memorials may be given to the American Cancer Society in the name of Michael Burke. Thomas James Mitchell of St. Clair passed away Monday, April 1st at the age of 90. Funeral services will be held at 10 a.m. Saturday at Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Burial will be in the Crestview Memorial Park in St. Clair. Visitation will be held from 3 until 8 p.m. this evening, then again after 9 a.m. on Saturday at Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to Eternal Promises Community Church in St. Clair in the name of Thomas Mitchell. Myra Ann Briggs of Cuba passed away March 31st at the age of 91. Funeral services will be held Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Mizell Funeral Home in Cuba Interment will be in the Merrimack Hills Cemetery in Cuba. Visitation will be held from 11 a.m. Saturday until the time of services at 1 at the Mizell Funeral Home. If desired, memorials may be made to the Alzheimer's Association or St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church on Forest Park Boulevard in St. Louis. Brian Mark Woodcock of Sullivan passed away at his home Tuesday March 26th at the age of 67. Funeral services will be Saturday at noon at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Cremation has taken place. The Woodcock family will receive friends from 10 a.m. until noon on Saturday at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Memorials to the American Cancer Society would be appreciated in memory of Brian. Wilma Elizabeth Scott of Sullivan passed away Thursday, March 14th at the age of 80. Funeral services will be held 
Saturday at 4 p.m. at Grace United Methodist Church in Sullivan. An earnment will follow at the IWF Cemetery in Sullivan. Cremation has taken place. Visitation will be from 2 until 4 p.m. prior to the service at Grace United Methodist Church. Memorial contributions in lieu of flowers may be given in Wilma's memory to the backpack program at Grace United Methodist Church and or BJC Hospice of Sullivan. Bailey E. Hartzell of Sullivan passed away Monday, April 1st at Mercy Hospital in St. Louis at the age of 22. Funeral services will be conducted Monday at noon at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Visitation will be from 10 a.m. until noon on Monday at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Memorials to Crohn's and Colitis Foundation in memory of Bailey would be appreciated. Sean Patrick Bemis of Hazelwood passed away Sunday, March 31st at the age of 48. Memorial services will be held Monday at 5 p.m. at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Private committal will be held at a later date. Visitation will be Monday from 3 until 5 p.m. at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to the Franklin County Special Education Co-op in the name of Sean Bemis. Rita K. Moon of Sullivan passed away March 26th in Fenton at the age of 76. Funeral services will be held Monday at 6 p.m. at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Cremation has taken place. The family will receive friends from 4 until 6 p.m. prior to the service at the Eaton Funeral Home. The complete funeral announcements with all the survivors will air with our 8 o'clock expanded edition of KTUI News this morning. Finding quality dental care that accepts Medicaid can be a challenge. Look no further than Compass Health Network. Our board certified dentists are here to make sure that you get the care you need and the respect that you deserve. Whether you need fillings, a general checkup, or major dental work, Compass Health Network is here to help. Call 844-853-8937 to schedule an appointment with a dentist near you or visit compasshealthnetwork.org for more information. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan is starting a new addiction recovery ministry called Life Issues. It's a biblical approach to the 12 steps, bringing scriptural principles into personal focus and making them come alive for transformational living. Whether you struggle with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, or relationships, you'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through this program. Life Issues will meet weekly on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. at New Testament Baptist Church. You're not alone. To find out more, contact New Testament Baptist Church at 573-468-3334. ATUI Weather Bug Weather Center for this morning. A clear sky, sunshine today with temperatures near 60. Clear tonight with patchy frost, low 34. Saturday is going to be a sunny day, high 66. Partly to mostly cloudy. Showers likely, maybe a thunderstorm Saturday night. Breezy, winds to 30 miles per hour, the low 48. Mostly sunny, can't rule out a shower Sunday, the high 74. Sunny Monday, high 76. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you, Jim Rinaldi. It's uh, 25 minutes past the hour of 7 o'clock. It's 35 degrees now here at the studios of KTUI. Out at the airport, they're still showing 32 degrees. And it's uh, time for uh, sports with uh, Bobby D. That's coming your way right after you hear this on KTUI. Earn 5.51 annual percentage yield on a seven-month CD at Sullivan Bank. Use our CD calculator on SullivanBank.com and see how much you could earn. Experience great rates and a step up in service. We are waiting to greet you with a smile. Annual percentage yield of 5.51 APY is accurate as of December 26, 2023. $1,000 minimum balance required to earn stated APY. Penalty may be imposed for early withdrawal, which will reduce earnings on the account. Interest compounded and credited quarterly. Rate subject to change at any time. Available at all locations. Checking out sports on this Friday from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. Cardinals came from behind to win their home opener over the Marlins yesterday. Here's John Rooney and Ricky Horton with the Cardinals recap. 
With Ricky Orton, I'm John Rooney, and what a great opening day, a thoroughly enjoyable day in downtown St. Louis. The Cardinals came back with five in the seventh to beat the Marlins eight to five. The opening day ceremony did not disappoint again. The Hall of Famers were on hand, the Clydesdales, and a big crowd as well at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals got a save from Ryan Helsley, who pitched the ninth inning. Good work out of their bullpen in general. Cardinals were out homered in the game, but the Marlins made two costly errors that led to the Cardinals' comeback. Yvonne Herrera hit his first Major League home run. He also drove in another in the game where he was a cleanup batter. And some big hits, too. Herrera played well. Mason Wynn played well. Uh, Alec Burleson had a big hit. So did Nolan Gorman doubling in, too. The Cardinals are off today. They'll play tomorrow. And on the mound, it's Steven Matz. Steven Matz, good his last time out. He just needs to keep it going. We'll be on the air at 1220 tomorrow. Ricky will have the lineups at 105. And I'll bring you the first pitch thrown by Steven Matz at 105. The Cardinals won their home opener 8-5 over Miami. Thank you very much, John. We'll have that Cardinals game on Saturday on 102.1 FM starting at 12:20. Blues desperate for points in their fight for a wild card playoff spot. Lost one on the road last night to the Nashville Predators. Here's Alex Ferrario with the Blues recap. Last night, the Blues started a three-game road trip with a must-win matchup against the Nashville Predators. Blues sitting five points out of a playoff spot with the L.A. Kings also in action, and they fall to the Predators 6-3. to three. First period, Roman Yossi scored 31 seconds in at even strength, but the Blues would tie it up there in the first period. Brandon Scott Saad scoring his 26th goal of the season, his sixth goal in his last seven games. Then power plays would happen in the second period. The Blues would go 0 for 3 with four shots on goal on their three power plays in the second. Nashville would go 2 for 2 on their two power plays to take a 3-1 lead. Then an early goal by Nashville made it 4-1 to one in the third period, but the Blues would push back. Jake Neighbors at even strength. Jordan Cairo on the power play to make it a one goal deficit with two minutes and 15 seconds to play, but then back-to-back -back empty net goals for the Predators capped off a 6-3 loss. Now 40-32-4 on the season and seven points out of a playoff spot after an L.A. Kings victory. They'll be back at it on Saturday against the Sharks. 5 o'clock puck drop, 4.30 pregame skate on the St. Louis Blues Radio Network. Thanks a lot, Alex. And we'll have that Blues game on Saturday on 102.1 KTUI-FM. Missouri football landed its first commitment of the 2025 recruiting cycle when consensus four-star quarterback Matt Zollers pledged his commitment to coach Eli Drinkwitz and Tigers Thursday afternoon. A standout signal caller at Springford Area High School in Royersford, Pennsylvania, the four-star prospect is ranked as the 17th best player and third best quarterback in the country per On3.com and is also the top-ranked player in the state of Philadelphia. He had narrowed his list down to four schools in early February before choosing Mizzou over Georgia, Pittsburgh, and Penn State, which is just a three-hour drive from his home. As a junior in 2023, Zollers threw for 2,900 yards, 37 touchdowns, just two interceptions, while rushing for 420 yards and seven more touchdowns. The early signing day period is currently set to start December 20th, which is the earliest he can officially sign with Missouri. However, there are discussions about moving up the early signing period. In the college scoreboard from last night, Mineral Area Baseball split a doubleheader at Three Rivers on Thursday, losing 11-6 and then winning 11-8. State Fair Community College swept a home twin bill with Metropolitan Community College 5-1 and 10-1. Jefferson College softball grabbed both games of a doubleheader from Moberly Area Community College on Thursday afternoon by identical 8-0 scores. MSU West Plains picked up a doubleheader sweep of Mineral Area, winning 7-1 and 2-0. And the UHSP Eutectic softball team lost on the road at Greenville, Illinois, 10-2 and 11-3. College schedule for today in baseball, Florida at Missouri, 6 o'clock. Also 6 o'clock starts for Missouri State at Bradley and Pittsburgh State at Central Missouri. Dallas Christian at College of the Ozarks for a doubleheader at 3. UHSP at Columbia College at 1230. Moberly Area Community College at East Central for a doubleheader at noon today. Emporia State at Missouri Western at 6. Hannibal LaGrange at Williams Baptist for a doubleheader at noon. Upper Iowa at Missouri s and at 3 o'clock. St. Louis Community College at St. Charles Community College for two games starting at noon. William Jewell at Umsel. William Woods at Missouri Baptist both 2 o'clock starts. 
college softball today. Missouri opens up a big series at Arkansas starting at 5 o'clock. Missouri State at Northern Iowa, doubleheader at 2. Kansas at Iowa State at 4 o'clock. Newman at Lincoln University for a doubleheader at 1. Moorhead State at Lindenwood at 3. Missouri Baptist at Williams Baptist for a doubleheader at 2 o'clock. Also 2 o'clock starts for St. Louis Community College at St. Charles and Mission University at UHSP. In outdoor track, Truman State Invitational finishes up today. Hannibal LaGrange is in the Illinois College Open, and Missouri Baptist and UHSP are at the Slew Billiken Invitational. And in golf, Fondbon men are playing at the Illinois Wesleyan Tournament today and tomorrow. The post-dispatch All-Metro Girls Wrestling Team has been released. Local wrestlers that made the first team include Annalise Obermark, a senior from Washington, who capped her career with back-to-back runner-up finishes in Class 3. Maggie Ortman, a junior from Washington, who won the Class 2 title match at 155 last year, placed third this year. And Dory Richardson from Salvin, who became the school's first female wrestling champion, winning the Class 1 title this season. Looking at the local scoreboard from yesterday, the game that we did on KTUI, Big Four versus Conference matchup, Union Wildcats shut out the Sullivan Eagles by a score of 3-0. Pitchers duel through the first three innings. Union broke through with a couple of runs in the fourth off Sullivan Ace Drake Gower, went on to the 3-0 victory. Union also won the JV matchup last night 16-4. It was Owensville over Herman, 5-3 in the varsity game. The JVs played to a 2-2 tie. New Haven picked up a win over St. James, 7-4. It was Steelville down in Cuba, 5-1. Pacific taking both games from St. Clair, 6-1 in varsity, 10-3 in the JV. The Union freshman beat Pacific, 10-4. It was Washington JV defeating Fort Zumalt East, 12-6. The Washington freshman with a 10-4 win over Fort Zumalt South. In girls soccer, Sullivan Lady Eagles, a nice win over Fatima last night, 5-1. Owens will be California 3-0. It was St. Clair over St. James 8-0. Washington played tough against the defending champion Ford Zumalt South. Came up short, though, 4-3 in the varsity matchup. Ford Zumalt South won the JV game 8-0. And at the Windsor Tournament, Pacific takes third place with a 4-0 win over Melville. Spring softball, Plato downs Bourbon 14-2 and Dixon edging Steelville 6-5. In boys golf at the Salem Invitational, Cuba takes first place. St. James was third, Sullivan was fourth. Individually, Jackson Marcy from St. James was second. Paxton Keogh from Cuba was third. Carson Dudley of Sullivan was fourth. Cooper Mell from Cuba was fifth. Easton Purvis from Sullivan ninth. And Isaiah Carrier from St. James finishing in 10th place. Liberty beat Washington in a dual meet last night, 161 to 198 on the varsity side. Liberty also winning the JV duel, 172 to 198. St. Dominic 166, Borgia 171, and O'Fallon Christian 229 in a tri-meet hosted by Borgia at Franklin County Country Club. Sullivan girls track team was at the Glendale girls night out meet. Devea McLean from Sullivan, 29th in the 100 meter hurdles. Ava Hetty was 18th in the 100 meter dash. Mariah Denny was third in the 1600 meters. Carly Head, 30th in the girls 400. Mariah Denny was second in the 800. Hetty was 23rd in the 200. Sullivan girls 4x4 relay team finished 17th. Brianna Mayberry 20th in the pole vault. Mayberry was 26th in the long jump. Caitlin Carpenter was 55th. Hetty was 8th in the triple jump. Carpenter was 38th. In the discus, Ruby Daly was 15th. Melody Broninger was 38th. In the shot put, Alyssa Beers 51st. Daly was 61st. In the javelin, McKinley Peterson 15th. And Peyton Witt was 37th. Sullivan finished 18th as a team at that meet. At the South Callaway JV meet yesterday, Herman girls taking first place. Owensville was fourth. On the boys' side, Owensville finishing third, and Herman was fifth. Looking at the schedule of games around the area today in high school baseball, Bourbon will be at Bell at 4.30. Herman at Rittner for a varsity-only game at 4.15. Capital City at Owensville, a freshman game at 4.30. St. Clair, New Haven, that's a rescheduled game from a rainout. Varsity and JV at 4.30. And Owensville, JV, and Varsity will be at Father Tolton starting at 5 o'clock. Also today, Borgia taking on Blue Valley Southwest at 5 o'clock at the Hollister Rogersville Baseball Festival. Pacific in the Camdenton Tournament taking on East Carter at 315 today. Girls soccer coming up tonight. Wright City will be at St. Clair, Varsity and JV at 430. Union now playing at Villa Duchenne at 4 o'clock for Varsity and JV. They were originally scheduled to host St. Charles. Uh, St. Charles uh, had something come up and couldn't play tonight, so Union picks up that game at Villa Duchenne. Spring softball tonight, Steelville will be at Plato at 4.30, Bourbon at Grandview, that is a uh, makeup, and that will be at 4 o'clock. 
High School track today, Sullivan Boys heading to Springfield for the Hillcrest Invitational. That's your look at sports from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great day, everybody. This is Bobby D. All right, it is 24 minutes in front of 8 o'clock. I'm Sam Scott. Glad to have you along here. We're broadcasting live from the Sullivan Bank Studios. Bobby D. along with me here this morning. And uh, let's see if I... Uh, yeah, actually, well, one, one, two, yeah, one, one, too, one far too far off, off on yeah. my camera this morning, yeah. but yeah, that, uh, that's the first time that captain's been right in a while. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, especially yesterday when I uh, spelled Keisha's name wrong. Uh, Whoops. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering what that was all about. I heard you talking about it. I was like, I didn't have I YouTube on out there on the on oh, the uh, yeah, well. TV, so I didn't know what, what all was going on. I'm like, oh, you know what. Well, see, I told uh, Keisha before. I mean, it's not like I didn't know how to spell her name, because we, you know, um, there's, uh, I don't know, what is she, a rapper or something named Kesha? Uh, and yeah. She, but she uses a dollar sign for the S in her name. It's K E dollar sign H A or something like that. Well, Keisha and I, we decided that she should um, do hers like that, except use a cent sign yeah. instead of the C in her name. But. Uh, but I spelled it more like Kesha than I did oh. Keisha. Oh, so. well, you were thinking about the other one. I don't so, yeah. know what I'm... Hey, before we get going on anything, yeah. I want to put a, send a shout-out okay. to the Bourbon High School Scholar Bowl team. Okay. Uh, I saw this on X yesterday while I was looking through for some scores. On Wednesday, they went to Bell to compete in the third and final GVC meet, Gascony Valley Conference meet. They went 5-0 and in the tournament and 15-0 and on the season. And well, they secured their con wow. conference championship for the second year in a row, and I, I think the Scholar Bowl districts are coming up here before very long, huh. too, so they well, uh, got a good chance of doing yeah, well Yeah, good there. position good to get in yeah. there. Congratulations, and good luck to them. So did I did I hear you, was it yesterday or the day before, something saying something about uh, Cuba joining a, a... Yeah, they've joined a, a Quad County Conference, just, I think just is what it's called. Football? Just for football, I think, is, is what the deal is. Uh, they're the only school in, in the in GBC that plays football, uh, they had applied for admission or were interested in joining the Four Rivers. There was talk about the Four Rivers Conference maybe expanding because uh, Rolla's Conference, the Ozark Conference, disbanded, and, and they were kind of left high and dry. Uh, Salem has been interested in getting in the Four Rivers for some time, and, and Washington actually huh. was looking to possibly get back into the Four Rivers Conference, and there was some talk of Borgia being interested. I, you know, I don't know how you know detailed or how deep that was uh they were going to split up into you know big school and small school um divisions right for the conference and yeah. uh you know and but that just i i think it got voted down by the uh forward conference principals superintendents whoever whoever right. votes on that and i know i there was there was some indication one of the stories i saw that uh, solvin was interested in the expansion um, and, you know, the thing about it is Cuba and Salem, um, I thought, were, were a couple of viable candidates. And just, this is my personal opinion. Um, I, you know, I think they probably would fit better than, than Rolla and Washington. Um, I mean, you could, you could still have a small school and a big school. It just wouldn't be really, really big schools. Yeah. You know, I mean, you put Rolla and Washington in there, those sure. are pretty good-sized schools. For you know, for a lot of these uh, teams to play, and Cuba and Salem play a lot of conference schools anyway, in, many, in a lot of the sports. Yeah, you know, so uh, I, I just kind of thought those were a natural fit. But it, you know, at this time, they weren't interested. So um, you know, Cuba, uh, it's getting tougher and tougher. There's been a lot of conference realignment over the last few years, especially Southwest Missouri, West Central, Central Missouri, and it's just getting tougher and tougher to schedule non. You know, they're a independent. Mm -hmm. So it's tougher to find games, right? And so they had been looking to join a conference, and but that's it's like uh, Herculaneum, Jefferson R seven, uh, Grandview out of Hillsboro, Perryville St. Vincent, Perryville Bayless out of the St. Louis area. I think some of the teams in the conference have played football, and they have played you know a few of those teams. I know they've played Grandview, uh, Jefferson, um, Herculaneum. You know they've played them in in football. And uh, and some other sports as well, so you know I don't think it'll be a just a huge transition, but that'll that'll help them out quite a bit. I, you know, the the big thing about it I think locally is the fact that they've had to drop 
they'll they'll have St. James uh, and Owensville James from and Owensville. from their right. schedule, and I know those were close games and, and kind of rivalry games, and you know there were um, you know fans could wouldn't have to drive very far to get there. You always right. had good turnouts and and good atmospheres for it, but um, you know, I think it's. Uh, uh, I understand the move for for Cuba, and it's, it'll make their football scheduling easier. So, you know, wish them the best of luck down there. So today is uh, Friday, of course. So it's a Red Friday. Yep. Red stands for Remember Everyone Deployed. So wear something red if you can. Accelerate ACL Awareness Among Young Women Day. So. Um, yeah. And and really, uh, it's a physiological thing yeah women are more susceptible to acl injuries because of the way their bodies are constructed because of the the wider hip area yeah. and it, it has a more severe angle than down to the knee uh because of the wider hip area and so there uh, when my my uh, youngest hurt her knee she didn't tear an acl but hurt her knee back in high school and track yeah and the doctor then had said, you know, he was kind of surprised that she hadn't, uh, you know, tore an ACL. I mean, she, you know, she played in three sports and stuff, and, um, and they had her wear a brace for the injury she did have. But, uh, you know, there were several girls back in our high school at that time that, that had ACL. So, you know. so um, ACL, um, yeah. I, know, I know it stands for anterior cruciate ligament. Um, Beyond that, I have no idea what it is. Yeah. It's down the knee. Yeah. I think it runs under the knee yeah. cap, I think. Bell Bottoms Day. Ooh, so, wow. Yeah. So. Um, They've uh, come back around twice. I know. Well, yeah. At I saw, least once, I, I know. Saw, I saw a girl, I don't know, yesterday or day before wearing bell bottoms, and I was thinking, yeah. wow. I mean, they've come back as a fashion trend at least once so, or twice. So, when I was a freshman, which would have been 78 or something like that um i had a pair of bell bottoms and unfortunately they were also hip huggers Ooh. yeah hip <laughs> hugger bell bottoms well i didn't have any hips and i didn't like the bell bottoms so i don't think those pants lasted very long they those made jeans. them into shorts <laughs> i don't remember what <laughs> yeah not. no i don't know if they yeah, were hip huggers hip -hugger, probably no. not no uh, yeah i uh you know i i think i had a pair of them too yeah, and I wasn't well, real wild about them. First contact day so I guess if aliens are going to contact us this would be the day. I'll, um, I'll be waiting the phone. I thought I maybe had a, had one yet a phone call yesterday <laughs> ahead of time. I had yeah. one that was from a kind of an unknown number or whatever and it was kind of weird. Oh. But uh, This I, is go for broke day. Hospital admitting clerks day. National. Do you say caramel or caramel? I say caramel. Caramel, yeah. yeah. That's mostly what I say. But yeah, I think most people do. National Dandelion Day. Now, ooh, National Deep Dish Pizza Day. Ooh, yeah. okay. Yes, yes. National Flash Drive Day. National Raisin and Spice Bar Day. National Walk to Work Day. Um, no, I'll skip that. Yeah, no. Read a roadmap day. I don't, does anybody know how to read a roadmap since they came Very out with GPS? Very few people do. Yeah. I still have I still have actual paper maps in my glove box. Do you have a, a Rand McNally or? <laughs> I don't think we. Well, no, I've got a. I don't know if it's a Rand McNally, but I've got an Atlas. Yeah. Thing at home, great big. You know, you used to get them from the sure. gas stations yeah. and and whatever. I've got one of those at home. It's probably. 10, 15 years old. It's outdated, but, you know, I got and, one. And it's uh, Student Government Day. And here's good news for you, Bob. Okay. There's a study out that says coffee preserves good health. I would assume you'd have to have good health to begin with for it to preserve it. Yeah, but well, they, yeah, okay. That's know. probably where I'm missing out there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, some information about Powerball. All right. Uh, it's another... Uh, record drawing. When's the next Coming drawing? Up Saturday night. Is that tonight, tomorrow night? Um, it will, uh, Powerball will match a record for lottery drawings Saturday night with a stretch of more than three months without a jackpot winner. Yeah. It's that string of futility that has enabled Powerball's top prize to reach an estimated $1.23 billion. It will probably be above that. Probably. I mean, they give you that as soon as the, the drawing on Wednesday is done, they give you an estimate. And then it usually goes about a hundred million or something above that, or a little bit more. It'll be the eighth largest in U.S. lottery history at that number. 
It's a sign that the game is operating exactly as, de as designed, with long odds creating a massive jackpot that entices people to drop two bucks on a ticket. Well, most people drop more than two. Uh, it means no one should ever expect to match all six numbers and hit a rich, though it is likely someone eventually will. And we've seen that proven out. Great. So the last time the Powerball jackpot was won was New Year's Day. January 1st. Yeah. Player in Michigan hit an $842.4 million jackpot. Since then, 40 consecutive drawings without a winner. Uh, lottery officials set the odds at 1 in 292.2 million in hopes the jackpots would roll over with each of the three weekly drawings until the top prize becomes so enormous that more people would take notice and play. Now, I didn't realize this, but the odds used to be significantly better. Now, they were still 1 in 175 yeah, million. But they changed the... But they, they changed it to get the bigger... You know, right, right. People were winning. It You know, they started off at 10 million, so they raised the starting amount. And, you know, people would win before it got just ginormous. They right. win 100 million, 200 million, whatever. And so in order to get it up, they, they raised the odds in, in 2015. Uh, but uh, they also made it easier to win smaller prizes, although they made the prizes smaller Yeah. from the original, uh, you know, way it was set up. But the overall odds of winning something are 1 in 25, mm. which okay. is... Not bad. I mean, no, no. that's better odds than the Cardinals have. It might only be two dollars, but yeah, or a dollar, whatever. But anyway, so that's uh, that's a little bit of information there about. Oh, uh, uh, okay, the the payoff. I, that's what I wanted to get to. Uh, of course, it's an incredible amount of money, but also less than you might expect, because while officials tout the one point two three billion dollar prize, that of course is for a sole winner who chooses to be paid through an annuity with an immediate payment and then annual payments over 29 years. Winners almost always opt for the cash, which would be an estimated $595 million for Saturday night's drawing. Take and of away course, taxes. Yeah, ta yeah, that's a big chunk will go toward taxes, yeah. although that amount would vary depending upon the winner's other assets and what are their state taxes, lottery winnings. Just note that the top federal tax income tax rate is 37% which means a lot of the winnings is going to go to Uncle Joe. Yeah. I mean, Uncle Sam. Well, yeah, for me, my assets are next to nothing. So. Yeah, so, yeah, actually, most of the taxes will go to uh, Ukraine. But anyway. Yeah, well. Well, Bob, we're about to enter that busy time of the year for weddings. Oh, yeah. And in a survey of newlyweds, we learned that uh, guests give some pretty bad gifts. I, or re-gifts. I don't know. I get it. How long? It's been like 35, 36 years or something since I got married, so I can't even, I can't remember any. I don't know that we got a, yeah, a I lot of, you know, very many bad gifts, you know. One uh, couple uh, said they received a set of four relationship books from a wedding guest. <laughs> a little late for that, wasn't it? Well, I don't know. that. Uh, well, I, yeah, maybe. Is that a bad gift? I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess they thought it was. I guess. I don't know. Another couple said uh, they got a set of monogrammed bathroom towels. With the wrong letters? Well, half of them had the first name of the groom, the other half the name of the bride, but the groom's name was misspelled. It, <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know, I'm not one there. I don't really get worked up about people who call me the wrong name. You know, it's like people, you know, I have two first names. Um, uh Actually, I have three first names, but um, if you want to get technical, well, about yeah, it. but I mean, um, so I don't care if people call me Sam or call me Scott or, you know, I have some, I have a classmate that calls me Samuel Wade, you know, <laughs> and always has. I don't yeah. remember, but anyway, so you know, I, I and I don't get too worked up with, uh, uh, but I, I always find it uh, amusing when I get uh, mail, and you know, my name's Sam. Scott, right? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. I mean, uh, I always get amused when I get mail that my name's spelled wrong. Um, you know, I was like, uh, we're uh, pretty uh, used to that. Yeah. Well, I can understand with a name like Disselkamp. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're you, pretty used you, to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, um, but here's my question Did the towels still dry you? Well, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if and you can get over. Uh, how many people yeah. are wandering around in your bathroom? 
<laughs> going, hey, right. your, uh, yeah, your, your name's spelled wrong. Your monogram is misspelled. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, if you have guests, don't put the monogram towels yeah, in the guest bathroom. Exactly. There you go. That's and so one absolutely. couple had requested a top-end mixer on their registry. Instead, two different wedding guests purchased the same cheap knockoff from Amazon. <laughs> well, well, yeah, okay. So if it's cheap knockoff, you use it till it breaks and then pull out the other one. Yeah. So and use go. it. And then, you I probably get about the same amount of use out of it that you would if yeah. you bought the high-end one. And a woman in Poland faced uh, permanent damage to her sight after she mistook a bottle of toxic nail glue for eye drops. Ow. Her eye was glued shut for eight hours, oh. and they were only able to pry her eye open again uh, by cutting off her lashes. Ooh. So. Read the label, people. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's assuming she could see well enough I, I beforehand to read the label. Maybe she could, and I don't know. Maybe but, not. Oh, that's, I don't know. Wow, that's, that's tough. Hey, uh, another... Instance of somebody getting into trouble in Florida. Uh -oh. Now I know why people are leaving Florida, you know, yeah. uh, overall. A Florida man arrested after he allegedly caused a fight at a Disney World bar while intoxicated. He made the fun of a woman with Down syndrome. Oh, boy. According to an arrest affidavit from the Orange County Sheriff's Office. The officer said 61-year-old Brent George was arrested, charged with four counts of battery, after the altercation, altercation that unfolded at the Bellevue Lounge, a bar inside Disney's Boardwalk Inn on January 25th. Just after 9 p.m., officers responded to the bar in response to a physical fight, later determined to be a battery against four victims. When arriving at the scene, officers said George was intoxicated and had several injuries to his face that he claimed were the result of being hit by a glass cup. George told officers he was in the Bellevue Lounge, a small bar area in the Boardwalk Resort with his wife and two family friends, where he claimed he had taken three shots of bourbon and drank a beer while at the bar. According to the complaint, the family was sitting at a nearby table when George approached them and started mocking the couple's daughter, who was described as having Down syndrome and was wheelchair bound. Okay, he deserved it. Yeah. Uh, the girl's mother then confronted George and asked him if he was making fun of her daughter when George stood up and allegedly shoved her twice. He proceeded to allegedly slap another guest at the table in the face when she tried to intervene. The husband of the woman who was slapped got involved and George allegedly punched him in the neck. George was then punched in the head by the husband. Uh, George allegedly told officers he did not remember anything specific due to being intoxicated. He said he was having a good time with the individuals and then he was attacked by them. Okay. One of the witnesses claimed he saw an individual throw a glass cup at George and overheard someone say they wanted to kill him. However, officers determined there was no broken glass at the scene and believed to be that no glass cup was utilized in the incident. An unnamed bystander grabbed George and removed him from the scene. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's uh, March 3rd. Um, he is expected to go to court here sometime this month on four battery charges. So yeah, if he was making fun of a Down syndrome, yeah, yeah that's yeah. I'm one sorry. One whiskey, one scotch, and one beer. Yeah, <laughs> bourbon, scotch, and beer. Yeah. yeah, bourbon, one beer, yeah. bourbon, one scotch. Yeah, yeah, one, that's whatever. the excuse. So I'm yeah. sorry. Um, let's see, uh, Mid-State Paving. You know, uh, getting into that time of the year again. Uh, paving, chip seal, site work, drainage, striping, seal coating. Septic services, grading, lake dredging, uh, ponds, repair, demolition, streets, parking lots, and driveways. Called Jim at Midstate Paving, and uh, you know, uh, five seven three six two seven two zero three nine, five seven three six two seven two zero three nine. Um, have him come take a look at it. Give you an estimate. Five seven three six two seven two zero three nine. Well, you know. Um President Trump is catching a lot of flack for a lot of things. That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but there was, you know, a, a lot of what he, you know, he's he's talking about doing the same thing that the Biden administration has done to him, and that's making changes at the Department of Justice and then using them to go after these people that have been going after him 
you know, isn't that called weaponizing? Weaponizing, the, yeah. yeah, weaponizing the DOJ, yeah. and that's what Biden administration been doing to you know to him and, and many others. Yeah, and I bring that up because the Justice Department on Tuesday asked a New York district judge to sentence the woman who stole first daughter Ashley Biden's diary to uh, up to ten months in prison for the crime. Hmm. Prosecutors for the Southern District of New York had initially sought a sentence of six months of home confinement, followed by three years of supervised release for Amy Harris, who pleaded guilty in August of 2022 to conspiring to commit interstate transportation of stolen property in connection with the diary theft. Harris has requested that her sentencing hearing date be moved 12 times, according to prosecutors, who argue that her excuses are an effort to improperly delay her punishment and merit a stiffer sentence. Uh, the defendant has repeatedly and consistently engaged in tactics to improperly delay this proceeding, including by misleading the court with false information to justify belated and unmerited requests for adjournments. Um, Harris, here's, Harris came across the first daughter's diary, tax records, and private family photographs and her cell phone in September of 2020 during a stay at a home in Delray Beach, Florida, where President Biden's daughter had previously been living. The diary contained her highly personal entries. Yeah. After stealing the diary, Harris and other property, Harris recruited a co-defendant, Robert Kurlander, to help sell it. Knowing that it belonged to an immediate family member of a then former government official who was a candidate for national political office. The duo sold the diary to conservative media outlet Project Veritas ahead of the 2020 election for $40,000. Now, the outlet did not publish the contents of the diary, but purported entries later emerged online. They were leaked by somebody. Right. Um, and, of course, those have those entries about her saying about the showering with her father when she was yeah. 11 years old right. or whatever it was. And then, of course, the, the thing that really gets me is this uh, lady, 70-year-old grandma, that is they're looking to sentence her for several, a couple of years in prison for the J6 thing. Yeah. All she did, she walked into the Capitol Rotunda after the Capitol Police had thrown the doors open and yep. told everybody to come in. She walked into the Rotunda carrying two small American flags. She prayed in the Rotunda for 10 minutes. She walked outside and prayed again for a few minutes and was then kind of rounded up whenever they thought, well, it's long enough now, let's yeah. start arresting everybody. And they're looking, you know, no violent, no destruction, no nothing. And they're looking to put her in prison for, like, multiple years. Yeah. Well, according to the New York Post, Catherine Herridge, the ex-CBS News correspondent who saw her files seized by the network after her controversial firing in February, set to break her silence before the House Judiciary Committee, the acclaimed investigative journalist known for her reporting on the Hunter Biden laptop scandal, will testify next week before the powerful panel on the still murky circumstances surrounding her exit from CBS, according to a source close to the situation. The potentially explosive hearing titled Fighting for a Free Press, Protecting Journalists and Their Sources will take place on April 11th. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what comes out of that. Yep. Um, so, uh, local birthdays today, Judy White and Grayson Camp. Grayson's 12 today. And then tomorrow, Daryl Dunn is going to be 64. Andy Giebler, Wyatt Holt, Tina Emmendorfer, and Cindy Martin. And then Glenn and Gloria Stack will be married 61 years tomorrow. Wow. So, happy anniversary yeah. to them. And... Uh, all right, so I've got to go to physical therapy and occupational therapy and everything, but what I really need is, is speech therapy. <laughs> anyway. Are you working on that? Uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, so right. I, well, I'm trying to talk them into that. But anyway, uh, so uh, I'll be gone here, and uh, you'll be taking over. And uh, we are AM 1560 KTUI Sullivan, broadcasting live from the Sullivan Bank Studios. Pick us up on YouTube and tune in. You can find those links on KTUI.com. It's 8 o'clock, and here's news. 
USA News. I'm Ryan Daniels. The Israeli military is announcing two officials who were in command during the airstrike that killed seven World Central kitchen workers this week have been fired. This as the White House and President Biden are now pressuring Israel to take concrete steps toward protecting civilian lives amidst the wider war in Gaza. Tal Heinrich, spokesperson for Israel's prime minister. We all agree that there has to be minimal civilian suffering, minimal civilian casualties in Gaza, and, and we're working in, in an, taking unprecedented steps to, to reach these goals. During a phone call Thursday, President Biden reportedly spent 30 minutes with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu explaining that if Israel did not announce steps to address the suffering of civilians, U.S. policy would change. Biden set to travel to Baltimore Friday to visit with local and state officials in the wake of the Key Bridge collapse. Area resident Cecilia Johnson says Biden's visit shows the importance of the port of Baltimore. Your everyday living of everything you buy and use comes out of this port. The White House said Biden's also planning to meet with the families of six bridge construction workers killed in the disaster. A federal judge denying Donald Trump's request to dismiss his classified documents case, the former president claimed that it should be tossed because his possession of classified records was protected by the Presidential Records Act. The judge in her decision wrote the charges Trump was seeking to have dismissed do not rely on that statute. Check your brackets. The NCAA semifinals are Saturday in Arizona. USA's Laura Winters with the update. Lots of folks will be betting on and tuned into the Final Four. First, the game between Purdue and NC State, and then number one UConn and number four Alabama play in Glendale, Arizona, Saturday. Saturday, Monday night is the national championship game. This is USA News. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive could save hundreds, which could be life-changing. life-changing. I mean, you could put that money towards that zero-turn lawnmower you've always wanted. And after using its edge-shaping technology to meticulously sculpt the face of the Mona Lisa into your grass, you'll become the undisputed king of Saturday morning lawn care, leaving your neighbor and sworn enemy Gary to question his place in the delicate neighborhood ecosystem. And it's all because you could save money switching at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Not available in all states. Do you have a story to tell? Bring your story to life with audiobooks. Great stories deserve great storytelling. Audiobook Network provides professional voice actors and full production services for every author's manuscript. From narration, production, and editing to distribution, promotion, and sales, Audiobook Network handles everything. If you have a print book, ebook, or even a manuscript, call Audiobook Network now and get our free audiobook guide. 800 734 1229. 800 734 1229. The FAA will continue investigating a near miss at New York's LaGuardia Airport. A commercial airliner accidentally buzzed the control tower last month during bad weather and multiple attempts to land. Go around, go around. Climb on the heading, climb into 2000. Climb into 2000, 2000. Everything turned out fine. No one was hurt, but the FAA wants to find out how that plane ended up so close to the control tower. The first week of April proving itself to be true to its reputation as one of the most turbulent periods for tornadoes activity. Meteorologists have verified the occurrence of over 20 tornadoes across a dozen states this week, of course, with the possibility of more to come. Researchers will be using Monday's solar eclipse as a chance to learn more about our sun, as well as how the celestial event affects the natural world. NASA will launch a plane that will observe the outer layer of the sun and the dust ring that orbits it. Amir Caspi, an astrophysicist working alongside the U.S. Space Agency, says the last time they did this was in 2017. We got amazing data. I could see it coming down off the live satellite feed. And of course, we're using a new instrument that's more capable and is able to get us a richer set of data, a richer set of observations. Other scientists are set to study things like the quieting of wildlife during the eclipse and the event's impact on communications and lowering temperatures. I'm Ryan Daniels, USA News. If you're a diabetic, we have great news. You can end the painful finger sticks with a new CGM. Plus, they may be covered by Medicare, Medicaid, or private insurance. If you test and inject daily, you may qualify. Call U.S. Med now to learn more. 800-471-7065. 800-471-7065. 800-471-7065. That's 800-471-7065. 
You deserve extraordinary care close to home. From primary care to advanced specialties right here in Sullivan and access to all that BJC Healthcare has to offer. We're here to provide the care you need. Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital and BJC Healthcare. Care that is comprehensive, coordinated, and completely about you. Learn more at MissouriBaptistSullivan.org. With news on Missouri Net, I'm Marshall Griffin. The Missouri House has passed a bill that aims to improve government efficiency. The bill from Cape Girardeau Republican John Voss would simplify the contract negotiation process by allowing for post-award negotiations with the lowest and best responsive vendor. A housing and substance use disorder service provider is expanding in St. Louis. Haven Recovery is investing more than $2.6 million and is creating 10 new jobs. A dental clinic this week in southeast Missouri is helping to fill the gap in the community. A.T. Still University's Missouri School of Dentistry is partnering with Lighthouse Church in Dexter to put on the clinic through Saturday for anyone in need of acute dental care. Dr. Herb Silva says there are openings available. There's a lot of need and certainly there's a correlation in health care, that oral health care, that's where it all starts. The, the rest of your health care comes from type of things. We have people that will travel up because they don't have access to the care in the geographic area uh, where they are down in, in the boot heel. To register, go to smilesofhopedental.com. This is Missouri Now. FCS Financial, with you every step of the way. Missouri farmers and ranchers work hard to provide the food we put on our tables. No matter what comes, they're in the fields every day. FCS Financial is committed to supporting those farmers and ranchers along with our rural communities today and tomorrow. At FCS Financial, we understand the cyclical nature of agriculture and the challenges that can present. We also recognize no two situations are the same, and that's why we meet and work with our member owners individually to learn about them, their operation, and their goals. We want to provide the best experience and achieve the best outcome for everyone involved because FCS Financial is a cooperative focused on being a responsible lender for more than 27,000 Missouri farmers, ranchers, and agribusinesses who depend on us. FCS Financial, an equal housing lender and equal opportunity provider. Earn 5.51 annual percentage yield on a seven-month CD at Sullivan Bank. Use our CD calculator on SullivanBank.com and see how much you could earn. Experience great rates and a step up in service. We are waiting to greet you with a smile. Annual percentage yield of 5.51 APY is accurate as of December 26, 2023. $1,000 minimum balance required to earn stated APY. Penalty may be imposed for early withdrawal, which will reduce earnings on the account. Interest compounded and credited quarterly. Rate subject to change at any time. Available at all locations. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan is starting a new addiction recovery ministry called Life Issues. It's a biblical approach to the 12 steps, bringing scriptural principles into personal focus and making them come alive for transformational living. Whether you struggle with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, or relationships, you'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through this program. Life Issues will meet weekly on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. at New Testament Baptist Church. You're not alone. To find out more, contact New Testament Baptist Church at 573-468-3334. The Missouri State Highway Patrol reported a fatal accident in Newton County at 1.22 p.m. yesterday on Ibex Road, one and a half miles northwest of Neosho. 57-year-old George M. Owens of Neosho was driving a 2010 Ford F-150, traveled off the right side of the roadway, struck the ditch and a fence, and then it overturned. 57-year-old George Owens of Neosho was pronounced deceased at the scene by the Newton County Coroner. The Highway Patrol made an arrest in Phelps County at 6.01 p.m. yesterday. 20-year-old Dennis R. Hatley of Springfield was arrested for DWI drugs, failure to display valid plates. He was booked and released. On Wednesday, March 27th, Phelps County deputies responded to the 18,000 block of Private Drive 1213 for a report of domestic assault when they arrived, the deputies found that a 76-year-old male from St. James was the reported victim. He said his grandson shoved him during a verbal confrontation. Suspect information was given. The investigation is ongoing. On Thursday, March 28th, Phelps County deputies responded to the 13,000 block of County Road 2220 for a report of a domestic disturbance. When they arrived, deputies found that a 37-year-old female from St. James was the reporting party. 
She said that she and a known subject were in a verbal argument. Contact was made with the other party. No further action was taken. On Sunday, March 31st, Phelps County deputies responded to the 10,000 block of County Road 3330 in St. James for a report of a weapons violation. When they arrived, deputies discovered that a 48-year-old male from St. James was the reported victim of a weapons violation. He said his neighbor pointed a gun at him. As a result of this call, 72-year-old Jerry Turner of St. James was arrested on charges of assault second degree and unlawful use of a firearm. Turner was incarcerated at the Phelps County Jail. On Monday, April 1st, deputies responded to the Phelps County Sheriff's Department for a report of animals at large. The victim, a 28-year-old male from St. James, stated that his neighbor's cows had been destroying his fence. Suspect information was provided. The investigation is ongoing. The St. James Fire Protection District responded to 70 total calls for service for the month of March. 19 motor vehicle accidents with injuries, 18 grass or natural cover fires, EMS assists were 11, 6 structure fires, 4 gas leak or carbon monoxide, 4 fire alarms sounding, 4 smoke odor investigations, 3 vehicle fires, and 1 dumpster fire. Roads that are still closed in Franklin County as of 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon, Bucklick Creek Road in the New Haven area closed between 4202 Bucklick Creek Road and 4267 Bucklick Creek Road due to a culvert pipe collapsing. It will be closed until further notice. And Wheeler Road in the Gerald area, uh, closest to 1918 Wheeler Road, it is closed due to a culvert washing out. The Missouri State Highway Patrol reminds boaters to get boating education before hitting the water this spring. Since 2005, anyone born after January 1, 1984 must have completed a boater's education course to operate a boat in Missouri. Last year, the Highway Patrol issued Missourians over 22,000 boater education certifications. The exam does cost, depending on how you take the course, it is state law that anyone who operates a boat in Missouri who was not born before 1984 must have taken the course. It isn't a skills test like a driver's test. Instead, it just teaches you what you need to know to operate a boat. If you don't comply with the boater safety requirement, you could be fined if you operate a boat in Missouri. You can find out more at mshp.dps.missouri.gov. Grace United Methodist Church in Sullivan is having a barbecue today. It will be from 11 a.m. till 6.30 p.m. All you can eat, dine in for $15, drive through or carry out $13. They also have hot dog meals for $5. And Grace United Methodist Church is located at 952 North Church Street, right behind the car dealership in Sullivan. There's a gospel hootenanny in Sullivan tonight. It will be at the House of Hope Church at 235 North Clark Street in Sullivan, and it starts at 7 p.m. A love offering will be collected and donated to the House of Hope Carl Duff Ministries. There's an open mic jam session in memory of Larry Laird tomorrow at the Eagle Small Hall. It starts at 5 p.m. It's open to the public. No entry fee. There is a cash bar. The Fraternal Order of Eagles in Sullivan hosting the Camp Hope Poker Run, and that will be tomorrow. Registration at 11 a.m. The ride out will be at noon. Entry fee is $20 per vehicle, card included, $15 to buy an extra card. UTVs, trucks, and motorcycles are welcome. There's a cash prize to the best hand. The Sullivan Encore Music Boosters presenting Music Trivia Night Fundraiser. That's tomorrow night. Doors open at 6. The trivia starts at 6.30 p.m. It's $25 per person. Attendees must be at least 18 years of age, and it's at the Fraternal Order of Eagles. Elizabeth LeCamp's tribute to the troops Vietnam era will be at the Bourbon Area Community Center, and that will be tomorrow. The community centers at 575 Elm Street in Bourbon. Doors open at 1.30. They present the colors at 3 p.m. and then the show begins 
Advanced tickets are $15 for veterans and $20 for non-vets. And there's a benefit for the Eminence Area Volunteer Fire Department. Their fire department burnt to the ground, and this uh, benefit will be at Jack's Fork Campground. It will be tomorrow from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. They have all kinds of activities going on. That is a look at your local news on a Friday. Have a great weekend. I'm Sam Scott. Do you have a guy? Like your dad or grandpa had a guy. Something broke around the house you couldn't fix, Gramps would say, call my guy. He probably drove an old blue pickup, big tool chest in the back, decades of calluses on strong hands, name on his shirt like Don or Ed or Buddy. He just always seemed to know the best way to fix any problem. That's why grandpa trusted him. There's not many of those guys around today, and no wonder, between taxes and technology, insurance and licensing, it's hard to be that guy and be competitive. Well, that's why this company started. We love what we do, and we still want to be that guy. Independent technicians, generations of combined experience, all joined together as one powerful team. Strength in numbers, you know? If you're ever stuck with a broken furnace or air conditioner, now you've got a guy. We're Level 9 Heating and Cooling. Level 9 HVAC.com. In recent funeral notices, Michael Joe Burke of St. James passed away Sunday, March 31st at Phelps Health in Rolla. He was 57. Survived by his wife, Debbie Burke of St. James, a son, Keegan, and wife, Elena Burke of St. James, siblings, Mitchell Burke of Kansas City, and Michelle Hembry and significant other Edmund Tapero of Yavni, Israel. Stepfather Jim Quinton of Cuba, brothers-in-law Bobby Morris and Scott Morris, both of St. James, Uncle Jimmy and wife Dottie Burke of St. James, Aunt Lula Patterson of Steelville, 11 grandchildren, many other children adopted out of love, cousins and many friends, Funeral services will be held at 11 o'clock this morning at the Hudson Funeral Home in Cuba with burial at the Steelville Cemetery. The service will be live streamed at 10.55 a.m. on Hudson Funeral Home's Facebook page. Memorials may be given to the American Cancer Society in the name of Michael Burke. Thomas James Mitchell of St. Clair passed away Monday. April 1st at the age of 90, survived by his wife, Penny Mitchell of St. Clair, three sons, Michael Mitchell of DeSoto, Gary Mitchell of Imperial, and Lee Young and wife Lisa of Union, a daughter, Margie Mitchell of Hillsboro, seven grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, other relatives, many friends. Funeral services will be Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair, Burial will be in the Crestview Memorial Park in St. Clair. Visitation will be from 3 until 8 p.m. this evening, then again after 9 a.m. on Saturday at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to the Eternal Promises Community Church in St. Clair in memory of Thomas Mitchell. Myra Ann Briggs of Cuba passed away on March 31st at the age of 91. Survived by her daughters, Kathleen and husband Nick Genos of Lake Ozark and Renee Clager of Cuba. Three grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, a special cousin, Ken Steeton of Grace Summit, along with nieces, nephews, and numerous friends. Funeral services will be held Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Mizell Funeral Home in Cuba. Interment will follow at the Merrimack Hills Cemetery in Cuba. Visitation will be Saturday from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. at the Mizell Funeral Home. If desired, memorials would be appreciated to the Alzheimer's Association or St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church on Forest Park Boulevard in St. Louis. Brian Mark Woodcock of Sullivan passed away Tuesday, March 26th at the age of 67. Survived by his children, Elizabeth Holmink of Sullivan, Tyler Woodcock and wife Kelsey of Potosi, and Dustin Woodcock of Sullivan, five grandchildren, numerous nieces, nephews, other relatives, and many friends. Funeral services will be held Saturday at noon at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Cremation has taken place. The Woodcock family will receive friends from 10 a.m. till noon on Saturday 
at the Eden Funeral Home in Sullivan. Memorials may be made to the American Cancer Society in memory of Brian Woodcock. Wilma Elizabeth Scott of Sullivan passed away Thursday, March 14th at the age of 80. She survived by her husband, Robert, her children, myself, Sam Scott, and my wife, Michelle, my sister, Jara Dawson, and her husband, Dave of Bourbon, her siblings, Ted Teeter, and Vivian Whalen, and husband, Jerry all of Sullivan, a sister-in-law, Anna Teeter of Sullivan, four grandchildren, ten great-grandchildren, numerous nieces, nephews, other relatives, and friends. Funeral services will be held Saturday at 4 p.m. at Grace United Methodist Church in Sullivan. An earnment will follow at the IWF Cemetery in Sullivan. Cremation has taken place. Visitation will be from 2 until 4 p.m. prior to the service at Grace United Methodist Church. Memorial contributions in lieu of flowers may be given in Wilma's memory to the backpack program at Grace United Methodist Church and or BJC Hospice of Sullivan. Bailey E. Hartzell of Sullivan passed away Monday, April 1st at Mercy Hospital in St. Louis at the age of 22. She's survived by her parents, James and Jennifer Hartzell of Sullivan, two brothers, Devin Hartzell of Sullivan and Nicholas Wildey of Columbia, paternal grandparents, James and Judy Hartzell of Sullivan, an uncle, Brian Smith, and wife, Angela, of Steelville, aunts, Diana Bartle, and significant other, Jeff Blanton, of Sullivan, Sarah Donnie, of Sullivan, and Laura Smith, of Park Hills, numerous cousins, other relatives, and many friends. Funeral services will be held at noon on Monday at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Visitation for Bailey will be from 10 a.m. until the time of services at noon Monday, at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Memorials may be made to Crohn's and Colitis Foundation in memory of Bailey Hartzell. Sean Patrick Bemis of Hazelwood passed away Sunday, March 31st at the age of 48. Survived by his wife, Autumn of Hazelwood, his son, Alex Bemis of Hazelwood, a daughter, Isabella Bemis of Hazelwood, his parents, Gary and Martha Bemis of St. Clair, one brother, Matthew Bemis, and wife, Jennifer of Union, other relatives, and many friends. Memorial services will be held Monday at 5 p.m. at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Private committal will be held at a later date. Visitation will be from 3 until 5 p.m. on Monday at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to Franklin County Special Education Co-op in the name of Sean Bemis. Rita K. Moon of Sullivan passed away March 26th, infant and at the age of 76. Survived by her husband, Leroy, her children, Donna Harmon Laporte of Sullivan, and Robert Harmon and wife Casey of Casper, Wyoming. Susan Snyder and husband Shane of Sitka, Alaska, and Keith Moon and wife Jill of Denver, Colorado. Six grandchildren, six great-grandchildren, two sisters, Linda Gann of Pacific, and Marianne Splitorf of Bourbon, nieces, nephews, other relatives, and many friends. Funeral services will be held Monday at 6 p.m. at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Cremation has taken place. The family will receive friends from 4 until 6 p.m. prior to the service at the Eaton Funeral Home. Your 401k is likely one of your most important assets but it's only one part of a comprehensive retirement strategy. Edward Jones can help you understand how your retirement assets fit into your entire retirement picture so you can work toward meeting your unique retirement goals. Contact me, Donnie Greenwald, your Sullivan Edward Jones Financial Advisor at number 10 First Community Plaza in Sullivan. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Come join us at our Seidenstruger Nobi Partners Spring Open House April 5th and 6th at our Union dealership and get in the yellow seat. We have event-only specials and you can save big on our John Deere compact tractors. Take advantage of 0% financing for 84 months with zero down. Plus save up to an additional $2,500 on model year 23 compact tractors. Visit SNPartners.com for more information. Offer valid through 4-6-2024. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. 
checking out sports on this Friday from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. Cardinals came from behind to win their home open over the Marlins yesterday. Here's John Rooney and Ricky Horton with the Cardinals recap. With Ricky Horton, I'm John Rooney, and what a great opening day, a thoroughly enjoyable day in downtown St. Louis. The Cardinals came back with five in the seventh to beat the Marlins eight to five. The opening day ceremony did not disappoint again. The Hall of Famers were on hand, the Clydesdales, and a big crowd as well at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals got a save from Ryan Helsley, who pitched the ninth inning. Good work out of their bullpen in general. Cardinals were out homered in the game, but the Marlins made two costly errors that led to the Cardinals' comeback. Yvonne Herrera hit his first Major League home run. He also drove in another in the game where he was a cleanup batter. And some big hits, too. Herrera played well. Mason Wynn played well. Uh, Alec Burleson had a big hit. So did Nolan Gorman doubling in, too. The Cardinals are off today. They'll play tomorrow. And on the mound, it's Stephen Matz. Stephen Matz, good his last time out. He just needs to keep it going. We'll be on the air at 1220 tomorrow. Ricky will have the lineups at 105. And I'll bring you the first pitch thrown by Stephen Matz at 105. The Cardinals won their home opener 8-5 over Miami. Thank you very much, John. We'll have that Cardinals game on Saturday on 102.1 FM starting at 12:20. Blues desperate for points in their fight for a wild card playoff spot. Lost one on the road last night to the Nashville Predators. Here's Alex Ferrario with the Blues recap. Last night, the Blues started a three-game road trip with a must-win matchup against the Nashville Predators. Blues sitting five points out of a playoff spot with the L.A. Kings also in action, and they fall to the Predators 6-3. to three. First period, Roman Yossi scored 31 seconds in at even strength, but the Blues would tie it up there in the first period. Brandon Scott Saad scoring his 26th goal of the season, his sixth goal in his last seven games. Then power plays would happen in the second period. The Blues would go 0 for 3 with 4 shots on goal on their 3 power plays in the second. Nashville would go 2 for 2 on their 2 power plays to take a 3-1 lead. Then an early goal by Nashville made it 4-1 to one in the third period, but the Blues would push back. Jake Neighbors at even strength. Jordan Cairo on the power play to make it a 1 goal deficit with 2 minutes and 15 seconds to play, but then back-to-back empty net goals for the Predators capped off a Six to three loss. Now 40, 32, and four on the season, and seven points out of a playoff spot after an LA Kings victory. They'll be back at it on Saturday against the Sharks. Five o'clock puck drop, 4:30 pregame skate on the St. Louis Blues Radio Network. Thanks a lot, Alex. And we'll have that Blues game on Saturday on 102.1 KTUI FM. Missouri football landed its first commitment of the 2025 recruiting cycle when consensus four-star quarterback Matt Zollers pledged his commitment to coach Eli Drinkwitz and Tigers Thursday afternoon. A standout signal caller at Spring Ford Area High School in Royersford, Pennsylvania, the four-star prospect is ranked as the 17th best player and third best quarterback in the country per On3.com and is also the top-ranked player in the state of Philadelphia. He had narrowed his list down to four schools in early February before choosing Mizzou over Georgia, Pittsburgh, and Penn State, which is just a three-hour drive from his home. As a junior in 2023, Zollers threw for 2,900 yards, 37 touchdowns, just two interceptions, while rushing for 420 yards and seven more touchdowns. The early signing day period is currently set to start December 20th, which is the earliest he can officially sign with Missouri. However, there are discussions about moving up the early signing period. In the college scoreboard from last night, Mineral Area Baseball split a doubleheader at Three Rivers on Thursday, losing 11-6 and then winning 11-8. State Fair Community College swept a home twin bill with Metropolitan Community College 5-1 and 10-1. Jefferson College softball grabbed both games of a doubleheader from Moberly Area Community College on Thursday afternoon by identical 8-0 scores. MSU West Plains picked up a doubleheader sweep of Mineral Area, winning 7-1 and 2-0. And the UHSP Eutectic softball team lost on the road at Greenville, Illinois, 10-2 and 11-3. College schedule for today in baseball, Florida at Missouri, 6 o'clock. Also 6 o'clock starts for Missouri State at Bradley and Pittsburgh State at Central Missouri. Dallas Christian at College of the Ozarks for a doubleheader at 3. UHSP at Columbia College at 1230. Moberly Area Community College at East Central for a doubleheader at noon today. Emporia State at Missouri Western at 6. Hannibal LaGrange at Williams Baptist for a doubleheader at noon. Upper Iowa at Missouri s and at 3 o'clock. St. Louis Community College at St. Charles Community College for two games starting at noon. William Jewell at Umsel. William Woods at Missouri Baptist both 2 o'clock starts. 
college softball today. Missouri opens up a big series at Arkansas starting at 5 o'clock. Missouri State at Northern Iowa, doubleheader at 2. Kansas at Iowa State at 4 o'clock. Newman at Lincoln University for a doubleheader at 1. Moorhead State at Lindenwood at 3. Missouri Baptist at Williams Baptist for a doubleheader at 2 o'clock. Also 2 o'clock starts for St. Louis Community College at St. Charles and Mission University at UHSP. In outdoor track, Truman State Invitational finishes up today. Hannibal LaGrange is in the Illinois College Open, and Missouri Baptist and UHSP are at the Slew Billiken Invitational. And in golf, Fondbon men are playing at the Illinois Wesleyan Tournament today and tomorrow. The post-dispatch All-Metro Girls Wrestling Team has been released. Local wrestlers that made the first team include Annalise Obermark, a senior from Washington, who capped her career with back-to-back runner-up finishes in Class 3. Maggie Ortman, a junior from Washington, who won the Class 2 title match at 155 last year, placed third this year. And Dory Richardson from Solvin, who became the school's first female wrestling champion, winning the Class 1 title this season. Looking at the local scoreboard from yesterday, the game that we did on KTUI, Big Four versus Conference matchup, Union Wildcats shut out the Sullivan Eagles by a score of 3-0. Pitchers duel through the first three innings. Union broke through with a couple of runs in the fourth off Sullivan A. Drake Gower, went on to the 3-0 victory. Union also won the JV matchup last night 16-4. It was Owensville over Herman, 5-3 in the varsity game. The JVs played to a 2-2 tie. New Haven picked up a win over St. James, 7-4. It was Steelville down in Cuba, 5-1. Pacific taking both games from St. Clair, 6-1 in varsity, 10-3 in the JV. The Union freshman beat Pacific, 10-4. It was Washington JV defeating Fort Zumalt East, 12-6. The Washington freshman with a 10-4 win over Fort Zumalt South. In girls soccer, Sullivan Lady Eagles, a nice win over Fatima last night, 5-1. Owens will be California 3-0. It was St. Clair over St. James 8-0. Washington played tough against the defending champion Fort Zumalt South. Came up short, though, 4-3 in the varsity matchup. Fort Zumalt South won the JV game 8-0. And at the Windsor Tournament, Pacific takes third place with a 4-0 win over Melville. Spring softball, Plato downs Bourbon 14-2 and Dixon edging Steelville 6-5. In boys golf at the Salem Invitational, Cuba takes first place. St. James was third, Sullivan was fourth. Individually, Jackson Marcy from St. James was second. Paxton Keogh from Cuba was third. Carson Dudley of Sullivan was fourth. Cooper Mel from Cuba was fifth. Easton Purvis from Sullivan ninth. And Isaiah Carrier from St. James finishing in 10th place. Liberty beat Washington in a dual meet last night, 161 to 198 on the varsity side. Liberty also winning the JV duel, 172 to 198. St. Dominic 166, Borgia 171, and O'Fallon Christian 229 in a tri-meet hosted by Borgia at Franklin County Country Club. Sullivan girls track team was at the Glendale girls night out meet. Devea McLean from Sullivan 29th in the 100 meter hurdles. Ava Hetty was 18th in the 100 meter dash. Mariah Denny was third in the 1600 meters. Carly Head 30th in the girls 400. Mariah Denny was second in the 800. Hetty was 23rd in the 200. Sullivan Girls 4x4 relay team finished 17th. Brianna Mayberry 20th in the pole vault. Mayberry was 26th in the long jump. Caitlin Carpenter was 55th. Hetty was 8th in the triple jump. Carpenter was 38th. In the discus, Ruby Daly was 15th. Melody Broninger was 38th. In the shot put, Alyssa Beers 51st. Daly was 61st. In the javelin, McKinley Peterson 15th. And Peyton Witt was 37th. Sullivan finished 18th as a team at that meet. At the South Callaway JV meet yesterday, Herman girls taking first place. Owensville was fourth. On the boys' side, Owensville finishing third, and Herman was fifth. Looking at the schedule of games around the area today in high school baseball, Bourbon will be at Bell at 4.30. Herman at Rittner for a varsity-only game at 4.15. Capital City at Owensville, a freshman game at 4.30. St. Clair, New Haven, that's a rescheduled game from a rainout. Varsity and JV at 4.30. And Owensville, JV, and Varsity will be at Father Tolton starting at 5 o'clock. Also today, Borgia taking on Blue Valley Southwest at 5 o'clock at the Hollister Rogersville Baseball Festival. Pacific in the Camdenton Tournament taking on East Carter at 315 today. Girls soccer coming up tonight. Wright City will be at St. Clair, Varsity and JV at 430. Union now playing at Villa Duchenne at 4 o'clock for Varsity and JV. They were originally scheduled to host St. Charles. Uh, St. Charles uh, had something come up and couldn't play tonight, so Union picks up that game at Villa Duchenne. Spring softball tonight, Steelville will be at Plato at 4.30, Bourbon at Grandview, that is a uh, makeup, and that will be at 4 o'clock. 
High school track today, Sullivan Boys heading to Springfield for the Hillcrest Invitational. That's your look at sports from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great day, everybody. This is Bobby D. Finding quality dental care that accepts Medicaid can be a challenge. Look no further than Compass Health Network. Our board-certified dentists are here to make sure that you get the care you need and the respect that you deserve. Whether you need fillings, a general checkup, or major dental work, Compass Health Network is here to help. Call 844-853-8937 to schedule an appointment with a dentist near you or visit compasshealthnetwork.org for more information. All righty, it is 8 through, there's a clock right up there, 835. And 40, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's Friday. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike McCullough and his wife, Nancy, the brains of the operation. Well, yeah, it's, she's my travel advisor. I <laughs> thought maybe she could come in and she could yeah. tell you what I've been doing. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, when you were in with John, uh, that... Uh, your your memory and recall on the um, about your trip yeah. was a little sketchy. Well, it's you know it's kind of a blur, really. You just <laughs> do so much and go so many places that it was hard for me to keep up with. So, you know, and I just I just said yes, dear, whatever you want. So it works well, out a lot better that way. Well, that's a lesson you learned well. You know, it, it's her world. I just live in it. She there lets me live in hey, it. Hey, well, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm a member of that club as well. Of course, now she won't say a word. <laughs> she just she just letting you have she's giving she, you a couple of minutes to have your yeah. opening. Yeah, she's giving you a few minutes to have your say and then she's gonna come in and you know and tell everybody how it actually is. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Well, you know, that whole travel advisory thing, it works really well to have good agents, you know, and, and they line everything up. Well, isn't that for the you. truth? Yeah, it isn't really does. that the truth? Because it I tell you you know, I've not been on a cruise. You but need I, to go. I, I, we want to. We're, we're hoping to. That's that's kind of in the plans. Uh, but uh, in talking with people I know that have been on several, they're like, you have to get a travel agent. Because you try to do all this stuff yourself, and, man, you're going to miss something. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and you're going to wind up left behind or whatever well, like this. Yeah. Like these, the Norwegians. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. Norwegian cruise line where yeah. the, the people got left in Africa. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, and that's something, you know, she can tell you, and she's the one that really does all this stuff. I just, like I said, I just do whatever she tells me to do. But um, it, it, it's a good idea, we found out from this last experience with those people in Africa, that you need to have your uh, excursions booked through the cruise line. Now, maybe you can save a few dollars by not, but you also might get left behind if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and I, I, you have to feel for those people who are oh, in that yeah. situation, you know, based on what we were reading. They did everything right, you know, the the excursion people contacted the cruise line and said, hey, you know, we're going to be an hour late. And the cruise line basically said, sorry, you know, the, we, we can't we wait. We have a schedule to keep, yeah. Well, and, and if you look at, uh, if you've done any cruising and you look at the number of ships coming in and out of port, you get a sense of how critical timing can be, you know, just for the, the people running the port. So you can't just hang out for an hour and, you know, wait and then uh, make your departure. You know, there there's certain times that those ships have to move in and out of those, those ports. And yeah. uh, you, you can imagine right now what Baltimore is going through, you know, not being Man. able to move all of those ships in and out and, of that yeah, port. Yeah, you know? and most of that's commercial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there's not as much... Uh, Pleasure cruises, so to speak, going out there. Most that's commercial, but uh, that, that's got to be a nightmare. Yeah, there were. I, I did read there were a couple of, of uh, uh, pleasure cruises yeah. that, that were in there, and they got out like the day before or something. And yeah. How would you like to be sitting on a boat there getting ready to leave <sighs> and find out you can't? You know? Yeah. Sorry, there's a bridge down. Yeah. Uh, you know, I saw uh, some pictures with when this all happened. Uh, we have my wife's sister and her husband live down in the St. Petersburg uh -huh. uh, area and they've got that one bridge you know that that goes over oh, right. the Tampa Bay there where all the yep. ships go under and it, you know it's it's one of those it was sort of like the the bridge in Baltimore where it goes in the middle it just you know mm -hmm. it's a hill like this and you go up and over and then the you know uh, they're limited in Tampa they have they can only have some of the smaller cruise ships because of that bridge you know so they can't have like the really big you know, Princess and Carnival right. cruise lines, and you know all those. Uh, most of theirs are the smaller 
quote unquote smaller. They're not small, but uh, because of that, uh, the you know the restrictions on that bridge. Uh, but uh, they had a picture of one of one of the cruise liners going under that bridge, and I mean, from the angle of the picture, there's probably 30 feet yeah. of clearance between the the mast and the in the smokestacks. And the bottom, bottom of that of bridge. bridge, yeah, and you know, so and they have to schedule them down there where they they only go out on low tide. Right, that's what I was just going to say. We took a cruise out of I think it was New York one time. That's right. And it was really fun. It was a great afternoon. We when we left and we were all up on deck, and then the the cruise director comes on and says, "Okay, everybody, go to the this side of the boat because we got to lean that way so we can uh, get underneath this bridge." <laughs> and it was really funny. Yeah. And we're looking in. I says, "I says we're going to hit that." Yeah, and I mean you're right. There was probably 30 feet clearance, but it doesn't it look sure like does it. It sure does look awful no. close, doesn't it? Yeah. But you know the other problem you have, you know, with a ship trying to wait for for somebody, um, you know, there's there's four, five, six thousand people on there that the next day have an excursion that leaves out, you know, 30 minutes after they dock. Yeah. So yeah, there's now, a, now you're gonna now you're gonna have a several thousand people upset because you were late getting into port. So that's just a tough situation, but but I understand it. Well, yeah. and and I think it really has more to do with when you're allowed to come into port um, versus when you have to leave. And I you know it takes X amount of time to get from port to port. And I really think that if you don't make that window coming into port, then you just can't get yeah, into port. Everything's messed up so, after that. So yeah. I really think that's the bigger issue for those ships, not yeah. so much when they leave. It's yeah. not like they can, like an airplane, where you can just speed up your airtime, you know, make up for lost time, you know. Yeah, you don't, you don't generally have a, a 300 mile an hour uh, jet stream behind you to speed you up yeah. on one direction of your flight or whatever. Or like you say, can fly a little faster. It just they go about as fast as they go, and mm -hmm. you know they you go too fast, and everybody's uncomfortable, and you got you know you clean up a bunch and, of messes, yeah. and then you've got rough seas to deal with, and you know so yeah it's a, but no we we do want to go um, on a cruise sometime. I think we'll probably we'll probably book something out of Tampa, just go down and you know go to our sisters and and let them take us over. And and the thing about you know Tampa again, uh, they've only got like three places where uh cruise ships can dock mm -hmm. you know their port area is pretty congested because it's in their downtown right. you know so they between that and the commercial shipping that comes in there they've only got three places where, where you know cruise ships can dock and we were down there over christmas and they had two in port at the same time which is unusual mm -hmm. you know usually it's just one and then you know they're kind of coming and going but they had two in port at the same time and one was leaving later that day but uh yeah, they've got the. We found out that they've got to leave Tampa on low tide. Yeah, the you know, uh, to get underneath that bridge safely. The bridge. Yeah, yeah. The, when we left out of uh, Cape Canaveral this last time, there was, and when we came back the same way, was there five other ships? I think the that there, there was actually ten ports there. Now we may have only seen oh, five of them, five yeah. of them, but we yeah. went to uh, uh, that section they had. You know, the, the the ports where the numbers went through. That's 10. true. They did. We were in. <clears> yeah. Yeah, like five ten through ten, or, or whatever. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have it separated out. I know, and I know Miami has a lot of them yeah. go out of Miami for a lot of those uh, Caribbean or Caribbean, however you want to pronounce it, cruises. There's a lot that goes out there. I told you that the other day, didn't I? It's it's. Um, if you're uh, talking about, about pirates, this, yeah. If it's pirates, it's Caribbean. If it's if you live uh, there, it's Caribbean. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and most people say them both they, yeah you know it's just you know they don't well it was funny because i asked this guy uh we were someplace down there at some place some restaurant or wherever we were and i asked the waiter i said so uh is it is it caribbean so I, I said i got a question for you and he says he says okay i got an answer i says well maybe so i said so is it caribbean or caribbean and he looked at me kind of funny for a second. And I don't know if it just clicked, but you can kind of see his eyes light up and says, well, if it's got pirates in front of it, it's Caribbean. Otherwise, it's Caribbean. Okay. <laughs> well, and that was when we were in um, Tortola in uh, British Virgin Islands. So we took a Jeep ride excursion and uh, got to see much of the island yeah. and went to uh, the top of uh, what was a restaurant pre-COVID. And um, uh, from that spot, you could see almost all of the Virgin Islands. And so it, that's what he was doing as he was pointing out each of the islands, including Blackbeard's yeah. island. And then yeah. that's when you asked that question about Caribbean yeah. or Caribbean. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, I mean, they. I like I say, I've talked to a number of people that have gone on, and they've all. You know, said that you know have have had good experiences from a variety of different cruise lines. They haven't all taken the same one, so you know that'll be our first choice is pick which one, which yeah. one we want to. Depends on where we want to go, I guess. But most of them usually go to uh, most of the same places, maybe just in a little different order. But uh, you know, you well, this last one we were on. The, the nice thing about it for us, being the age we are, is there weren't a lot of kids. Now maybe that was part because of the time of year, mm-hmm. but. Um, it was great. There were, I mean, I, I literally don't think I saw more than 50 kids on the whole trip. Right. It was, I think the timing of the year had a lot to do with it. Yeah, it was but, spring break. Yeah. Um, what well, we uh, discovered on Norwegian is uh, they do things a little bit differently than some of the other cruise lines that we've been on. Um, they have what they call freestyle cruising um, and freestyle dining. So they don't have scripted times where you have to uh, be in the restaurant, you know, at at these specific times in order to get your meal you basically choose when you want to eat and where you want to eat they have more dining options Mm -hmm. than some of the other cruise lines and they didn't have a large area that catered just to the children it was a very small uh, area so they accommodate the small children and uh, the teenage crowd but they don't really cater to it okay all right Um, so it's just it is something to kind of look at is what kind of amenities are on the the cruise line and you know what are you looking to do because you will usually have at least one day at sea sometimes two days at sea so you know what are you going to do on a ship and you don't want to be right yeah besides eat but you don't want to be you don't want to be overrun by by kids you know so yeah Uh, that happens enough in normal life Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh but yeah unless of course you know now now my wife uh my wife is a is a disney fan you know so i i could see her uh, wanting to or thinking about doing a Disney cruise, I wouldn't necessarily be real wild about that. With your grandkids, maybe. maybe well, <laughs> we could be waiting a while for that. Oh. Yeah, the, the, the nothing nothing imminent anyway, let's put it that way. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, maybe somewhere down the road, like you said, but uh, if I was going on one right now, I think I would probably prefer uh, something of the more adult-oriented you know, you know type the, thing and you know yeah the challenge with disney is everything disney has gotten so expensive oh yeah and and the cost of those cruises versus uh other cruises it's just really really costly yeah. to do them so um unless you really want to have that full disney experience um and you've got somebody little who can enjoy it i don't i'm not sure that you know bang for your buck that you're going to get the right. same cruise you know yeah. experience yeah yeah uh, me, I'd be, you know, I'm just, I'd be happy with just the basics, maybe having a, a show or something to go to, uh, you know, if they've got a, like a small casino, that would be fine. Wouldn't necessarily have to have one, but I if they do, pretty much all do, yeah. I think most of them do, you know, so that would, that would be all right. Uh, not that I would spend the whole cruise in there, but just kind of gives you an option, something different to do and, and stuff. But, uh, I'd, you know, I'd be con- content if I had a balcony room. Yep. I'd just be content sitting out there and, you know, watching the waves go by. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spend a lot of time know, doing that. You know, just take a book, mm-hmm. you know, or, or you, know, uh, you know, hook your phone up and listen to something on your phone or whatever and just, you know, just just watching the world go by. For me, because it would be my first experience on there, so I'd just, you know, I'd be. Or well, maybe going to the stern and hitting some golf balls off the stern. Yeah. Or something. You talked about uh, <laughs> you know. the shows and that, and we the last couple of cruises that we've been on especially – uh, we've kind of taken in a few of those, and we went to, I don't even know, th- four or five different shows on this last one. And, you know, some of those guys, we had a comedian that was just hilarious. Yeah, yeah, he was very and he good. Was, he, was, um, he was an old-time comedian. He made fun of everybody. <laughs> himself. himself. I mean, yeah. everybody. <laughs> he and nobody for- got offended. In fact, yeah. he even started out by saying, you know, if you're going to be offended by some of the things I, I'm going to say, you need to leave now. Yeah, yeah. This is and what this is who I'm going to make fun of. That's if, right. Yeah. So if you fall under any of those categories and don't think you'll like this, there's the door. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. Uh, well, what that's he said. good. I like that. Yeah, that's yeah. good. And the thing that was enjoyable is that he used uh, adult humor with uh, an appropriate amount of of slander thrown in, and and he didn't do anything that was vulgar. So he oh. was able to bring the humor across, you know, for an adult audience without it just being. Being repulsive and vulgar and disgusting, yeah. you know, which, which, which a lot of which them, really made it enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them can't do that or mm-hmm. choose not to do that. Let's mm-hmm. put it that way. They probably can, but and the thing about it, 
and I've heard this from other people that have been, you know, the friends of ours that have been on cruises and stuff, and they talk about the shows and the comedians, and they're like, these performers at these shows are as good as or better than a lot of people you see that are yeah. are famous and, and making the big bucks out in the out in the world right now on on TV or you know in co- you know comedy shows or whatever, you know. Oh, this guy's a lot funnier than you know than so and so is, and you know this singer was better than whoever, uh, you know. So I I think some of those some of those are like real hidden gems. Yes, they yeah. are. And the other thing we saw was, and and I don't you'll remember the name Nancy, but it was Choir of Men or something or. Oh, now you're not going to remember the name. No, oh, I don't. Uh-oh. Yeah, it just had something of men, um, oh. and it is, a, I think, a Broadway caliber show, and and uh, it was unexpected really to see it on the cruise line, um, and they uh, the show actually is going to be in Chicago uh, this next month. Um, so I but there were men or, or something. Yeah, the, the there was I don't know a dozen guys up there, and for an hour and a half, they never stopped. And I'm not talking about just singing; they sang. But uh, and, and told stories, and they made a whole story out of it. But these guys were running around and jumping. It was unbelievable. Yeah. You know, I was tired after watching them. <laughs> so. It's very high energy. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was crazy. And, uh, and the monologue didn't lag. So a lot of times in musicals, you know, when they're not singing, you know, there's kind of like the rhythm of the show. And this, this show had perfect rhythm. Everything just, as Mike said, it just flowed. There was no downtime. You weren't waiting for the next, you know, speaker to speak. It, it was good. They and did they a did really good job. They did some of the most job. hilarious things that, you know, yeah. everybody was just crying oh from laughing so hard. Yeah. It was well, it was really good. Yeah, and you haven't seen a show until you've seen uh, men urinating on stage without seeing them urinate on stage. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was, it was the hilarious. funniest okay. scene I've ever seen in my life. All right, that piques my interest. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. good. It's okay. good. We'll, we'll have to get the name of the actual show, and people have to put it on their list to see. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, well, it was. A, I mean, it was just option. crazy. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. Well, and, all right. So, um, but uh, sounds like it was a great trip. And uh, anything, anything similar to that in the in the immediate future, or uh, not for a year? Yeah, for a let year. me rest for a gonna, year gonna and take yeah, some no, time off, five months or yeah, something. Yeah, no cruising for a year. So this time of the year, what we like to do is we like to hit the road. Yeah. So we're going to do a road trip out to Vegas, and uh, we haven't quite mapped out everything we're going to do, but um, the they call it the Mighty Wait Five. We. Okay, I haven't mapped out go. everything there we're go. going to do. Yeah. So, uh, I think they call it the Mighty Five in Utah, the five national parks. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. Uh, yeah, I've heard something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, um, I was talking with a, a friend of mine uh, about that, and she said that they're not that far apart. So, we might try and, and hit those while we're out there. I definitely know I want to see Arches National Park, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, I think it's called Red Rock Canyon, which is outside of Vegas. Um, has some interesting desert formations. Um, so I think we'll try and do some of that, you know, work some of that in on this road trip. Right. Well, that sounds yeah, interesting. We're, we're Are going you gonna, out to Bowl, or I'm going out to Bowl. You're going out to Bowl. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, I would like to take something I would like to do domestically is do the Route 66 trip. You know, I think I'd get tired of dri- If you're truly going to do the Route 66, you're going to take a lot of two-lane road. Oh, yeah, that, that's it would a take great trip. Forever, I don't know. Yeah. I think I'd get we, impatient with we, that. We, uh, I did. I was um, at a at a business there in town, St. James. Of course, you know, part of the original Route 66 goes through there, and there was a group of uh, people from Germany that came over, and that was their summer vacation. I think there were six or eight. I think there was like three or four couples, and uh, they they were traveling together. And they, they had rented two different cars, and they were coming through and following the uh, Route 66 maps and all the mm-hmm. little places and towns and whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it was a gas station where I saw them. Uh, I'd stopped in for something, uh, maybe to get a soda or whatever, and they were filling up with gas. Uh, and uh, they were, you know, I heard them talking, and they were looking. And, and the gas station had some of the little, you know, the postcards and the little Route right. 66 trinkets and stuff like that, you know. And they were looking at that, and that was one of the things they were doing. All these little places they stopped, they were, you know, they were looking for some of the little the trinkets and the, you know, whatever. And they were all commenting on this. And so, I, you know, I was just bold, and I asked them and, and everything. And they, we probably spent 10, 15 minutes in there, 
you just kind of going over their trip and how much how interesting it was and how much fun they were having and you know recounting some of the different things they'd seen and oh we had you know we had no idea that this was available and you know all, uh, that this was here or you had this or that yeah. and it was just you know they were really um just enjoying well, the whole trip and uh well, if so you want to do that um there's a uh, annual event and i think it's in june uh, that Illinois host, and they have the red route and the blue route of Route 66, and they have a, a celebration weekend, and they give you a little map and, you know, little places to stop. And one of the most interesting things that we saw mm -hmm. was a section of Route 66 in Illinois that was recreated from how the highway was in 1928, and it was a brick road. And you're actually driving. It's like you know, you feel like you're in Oz that you're mm -hmm. driving down the wow. the, the yellow brick road. And it road. was noisy. <laughs> oh well, yeah. It, but it was it's like, like, like a three mile stretch yeah, uh -huh. of highway, and it's road. one of the most uh, most traveled sections oh, yeah, of Route I, I 66. So. Yeah. So uh, that was quite, and it wasn't even something that was on our no. We just stumbled radar. across it. Yeah. yeah, and just stumbled across it. But I think um, we were headed to Michigan or something. You had to work. We were. And, we were. So, um, but that's a good way to kind of get a sense of what Route 66 was like without yeah. having to do the whole, uh, the whole traveling thing, yeah. out to California, yeah. out you, to L.A. You can also do like Route 50, too. Yeah, now I, it's not near as popular, but that's another one that I've seen yeah. that, that people, um, you know, don't realize a little bit of the history and, and how much there is on, on that uh, yeah, I didn't, tour as well. I didn't even realize it was a thing to do, and, and uh, I know a guy, and I won't mention his name, Charlie Schlotick, but um, I know a guy that drove from Washington, D.C. back here, got home and was so excited because he made the whole trip on that, you know, little road uh -huh. and didn't get any kind of speeding ticket. Guess what showed up in the mail about three or four days a later? A speeding ticket That's from right. a red light camera, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, well, uh, Charlie spoke too soon. Yep, that's right. But, uh, you know, that, but no, those, you know, and I, I, that's kind of a thing I like to do, you know, is just like you say, I'm like you guys, you just kind of make a, a little road trip and, and stop in all these little towns and, you know, try the little local restaurants and go into the little local shops or museums or, you know, something like that and just see what they have to offer, what's there. You find some really interesting and iconic things uh, in some of these places. Um, you know, we went to, like I said, when we were down in Tampa, we went over to uh, Ybor City yeah, over there and, and toured uh, some of the places and went to a little museum over there and watched a little video thing and went through the tobacco museum and there's a little uh there was a little baseball museum around the corner that talked yeah. about the the you know, people from tampa that you know played in all the minor league teams and stuff that were down in that area tampa st pete and you know and we had a you know real authentic cuban sandwich which was so good yeah um <laughs> you know we didn't have time to go to one of the the remaining tobacco factories uh the cigar factories down there but that's something that we we'd like to do but uh you know, there's just little things like that that are all over this country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That well, people the, have no idea, you know. This trip that we're taking to Las Vegas, I thought we were going to take the northern route. I okay. mean, that's, what, that's where I, I was headed yeah. until a couple of weeks ago, and then I found out we weren't going that okay. way. Okay. Yeah. But we were going to go up and, and go across North Dakota and all the way up through there. And, oh, yeah. And go into, well, we've been to Wyoming, but been through, I haven't been through Montana. I want to go through Montana, and I want to go to Yellowstone. Yeah. Now, not necessarily the park. I just want to, you know, if, if you've seen the show on TV, yeah. I want to go by the train station. Have you seen the show? <laughs> yes, I've seen it. So, yeah, oh, yeah I want to walked. see where the train station yeah, was. I, and yeah, I don't think there's an exact location for that. They it's just, someplace in Wyoming. Yeah, though. they just picked out a, a some place yeah. on the on the on the on a big hill on the yeah. road where it curves and you can pull off and and there's a big embankment there and they just that that's the train station. So. Well, and uh. the challenge is most people don't come back from the train station. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I'm not really that's, sure that's, why that's on yeah, Mike's list. That, I mean, I'm a little bit leery about going there. Yeah, I don't know. You you want to visit that one from a distance? I think yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to stop. Just yeah, make drive sure you don't. It. Yeah, make yeah. sure you don't make Kevin Costner mad. Yeah. That's that's right. <laughs> Before you go, okay. Guys, thanks so much for coming in. Not I appreciate it. Enjoyed it. Uh, Mike McCullough and wife Nancy coming in, kind of tell us about their travels and trips and everything, but uh, enjoyed that and, and uh, maybe have you back. Great. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. We're coming up on 9 o'clock, and we'll have news. Uh, we'll do a quick for sale show.
and then probably go through some community notes, just kind of catch up on what's going on around the area. Uh, we are KTUI 1560 AM Sullivan. Uh, you can catch the morning show on YouTube. Uh, just go to YouTube, search for KTUI Live. You can pick us up on the TuneIn app at KTUI-AM. And those uh, links for our TuneIn apps are available on KTUI.com. It is 9 o'clock. Time for the news. USA News. I'm Ryan Daniels. The Israeli military is announcing two officials who were in command during the airstrike that killed seven World Central kitchen workers this week have been fired. This, as the White House and President Biden are now pressuring Israel to take concrete steps toward protecting civilian lives amidst the wider war in Gaza. Tal Heinrich, spokesperson for Israel's prime minister. We all agree that there has to be minimal civilian suffering, minimal civilian casualties in Gaza, and, and we're working in, in an, taking an unprecedented steps to to reach these goals. During a phone call Thursday, President Biden reportedly spent 30 minutes with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu explaining that if Israel did not announce steps to address the suffering of civilians, U.S. policy would change. Biden set to travel to Baltimore Friday to visit with local and state officials in the wake of the Key Bridge collapse. Area resident Cecilia Johnson says Biden's visit shows the importance of the port of Baltimore. Your everyday living of everything you buy and use comes out of this port. The White House said Biden's also planning to meet with the families of six bridge construction workers killed in the disaster. A federal judge denying Donald Trump's request to dismiss his classified documents case, the former president claimed that it should be tossed because his possession of classified records was protected by the Presidential Records Act. The judge in her decision wrote the charges Trump was seeking to have dismissed do not rely on that statute. Check your brackets. The NCAA semifinals are Saturday in Arizona. USA's Laura Winters with the update. Lots of folks will be betting on and tuned into the Final Four. First, the game between Purdue and NC State, and then number one UConn and number four Alabama play in Glendale, Arizona, Saturday. Monday night is the national championship game. This is USA News. Hear that? The relaxing sound of ambient music in a yoga class. And if you were here, you'd listen to 15 people taking a deep breath in sync. But you're not here. Because your self-care happens out on the road, riding your motorcycle protected by Progressive. So if you ride, get a quote today and see if you could save with Progressive, America's number one motorcycle insurer, and find inner peace with a different pose called Palms on Handlebars. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates not available in all states. Hi, I'm Ronnie Deutsch, and if you or your business owe money to the IRS, I've got great news for you. Tax laws have changed. Billions of dollars are earmarked for IRS Fresh Start programs. And if you qualify, you can literally save tens of thousands of dollars. Listen, I know what you're going through. Call me if you want to speak with a tax attorney or tax professional for free. 800-284-9275. That's 800-284-9275. 10 to 15 years, that's what prosecutors in Michigan want the convicted parents of school shooter Ethan Crumley to serve in prison. The teen shot up Oxford High School in 2021, killing four of his classmates. Parents, James and Jennifer Crumley, were each found guilty of involuntary manslaughter after they turned a blind eye to their son's mental health problems and left a gun used in the crime unsecured. On Wednesday, prosecutors said they'll ask a judge to sentence them both to 10 to 15 years in prison. Layoffs on the horizon for Amazon. Corey Myers has those details. Amazon says it's cutting hundreds of jobs in its cloud computing unit, AWS, as part of what they call a strategic shift. The tech team that oversees the actual physical Amazon stores will lose a few hundred people, plus several hundred roles in the AWS sales, marketing, and global service organization. The only thing that can ruin the eclipse on April 8th, clouds. And some are expected to show up. Texas and Ohio might not be the best spots thanks to the weather forecast calling for significant cloud cover in those states. Forecasters are optimistic about the northern part of the path of totality with clear skies most likely in northern New England and upstate New York and in Arkansas and Missouri. I'm Ryan Daniels, USA News. 
Have you ever picked up a towel set because it felt really soft in the store? But then when you go to use it, it's not very absorbent. That's why My Pillow has developed the My Pillow towels. Towels that work. The six-piece towel set includes two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. And right now you can receive a six-piece set for only $39.98 with promo code USA. Go to mypillow.com, click on the radio listener special, and enter promo code USA. Or call 800 951 8175 That's mypillow.com. Promo code USA. ATUI Weather Bug Weather Center for this morning. A clear sky, sunshine today with temperatures near 60. Clear tonight with patchy frost to low 34. Saturday is going to be a sunny day, high 66. Partly to mostly cloudy. Showers likely, maybe a thunderstorm Saturday night. Breezy, winds guns to 30 miles per hour, the low 48. Mostly sunny, can't rule out a shower Sunday, the high 74. Sunny Monday, high 76. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you very much, Jim. 46 degrees and sunny skies at the studios of KTUI, Sullivan Bank Studios, KTUI Radio here at 900 Elmont Road in Sullivan. It's time now for the For Sale Show, your chance to buy, sell, and trade your items on the radio. Uh, you can uh, send me a text at 573-677-1001. You can email uh, for sale at ktui.com. Either you can use the number 4 or the letters F-O-R. It'll get here either way. Uh, and again, you can mail it to us. Uh, for sale, show care of KTUI Radio, P.O. Box 99, Sullivan, Missouri, 63080. Or if you happen to be coming up this way, you can drop your for sale show items, uh, your little notes or whatever, off here at the studios during our regular hours, usually before noon. Um, and during the tax season here, the uh, Bruce King Scott tax office right next door is uh, is open till later in the afternoon. You probably drop it off in there, and they can get that to us. So, um, and you know, if you if you need to call, I can probably try to get uh, get you on the phone line uh, today. So uh, you can four six eight five one zero one. Uh, you can see that number as well. Uh, let's see. I have for sale an Earthway Precision Garden Cedar with six seed plates. It's in good condition, and they're asking $50. Also, a commercial 12-inch blade Burkle U.S. Meat Slicer, and they're asking 200 for that. The number to call on those items is 573-627-3317, 573-627-3317. Lady has a Whirlpool washer and dryer for $600 and sits in good shape. And let's see, uh, what else does she have? Got a few other items. Has some baby chicks that are about six weeks old. Those are $10 each. And also has some eight month old laying hens, some other antique items. 573 617 9109. And that's 573-617-9109, the number to call there on those items. Uh, so folks, uh, I guess on Sunday, uh, called up. They, Perry took the call. They have a, had a lost dog. It was a black male poodle lost out in the Sappington Bridge area. And if you have uh, live out that way or near that area, and you've seen a dog fitting this description, call these folks at 573 573- Two zero one nine zero four eight. Uh, let's see. We have a two thousand four three quarter ton Chevy Extended Cab pickup for sale. Three one four six three zero nine four six eight. Three one four six three zero nine four six eight. And Ron's got a, a recumbent Nordic track for one fifty and a Green Mountain Smoker for three hundred. Six three six four eight five five eight two four. Six three six. Four eight five five eight two four. Oh, let's see uh, what else we got here. Sewing machine for sale six three six five seven five four two five eight six three six five seven five four two five eight on that sewing machine. A Suzuki wench for one fifty. Have some pink camo and they're looking for a Flintstone cookie jar. Five seven three seven six four 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 three five. 573-764-4435. And what else is on there? We've got a 2005 Holiday 5th Wheel Trailer. It's 29 feet long, 16 foot slide, good tires, good shape. A couple of numbers to call there, 
636-584-5060. You can also call 636-629-1268, 636-629-1268. And let's see, some Indian figurines, color glass, albums, and a Bowflex, 573-259-9448. Um, let's see, that's gone. Um... Shelby's got some Blue Heeler pups for sale. If you would like more information, you can call 573-457-8505 and leave a message. That's Blue Heeler pups for sale. For info, leave a message at 573-457-8505. And let's see, these folks have a large collection of porcelain and colored glass. Also a Yamaha 1600 Silver Edition motorcycle. Lots of extras and options, always garaged, new tires, and well-maintained. It's one owner, and 573-259-9448, 573-259-9448. And that will do it for the for sale show today. And again, you don't have to wait till during the for sale show time to send us your items. You can really do that anytime with the mail, uh, with email, or with text. Uh, and again, just uh, get that stuff to us, and we'll get it on and read it for you for several days here on the For Sale Show. Uh, currently 11 minutes past the hour of 9 o'clock. I'll get into some community notes, do a recap of some things that are coming up around the area in the days ahead, right after you hear this from Jerry's RCA. Upgrade your laundry room style and function with a Whirlpool large capacity front load laundry pair. Clean regular size loads fast with a quick wash cycle and get on with your day. In the dryer, the wrinkle shield option helps keep wrinkles from setting in when you can't unload right away. For mattresses, furniture, flooring, and appliances, see the folks at Jerry's TV and Home Furnishings at 375 West Springfield in Sullivan or call 468-4300. All right, thank you very much. And let's get into some community notes. I know Sam has several of these on the news today, but we'll go ahead and kind of recap what I've got in the pile today. Uh, the Gratia Dye Methodist Church at 952 North Church Street in Solvent is having a, a barbecue today. And they'll start serving at 11, serving through 630. It's all you can eat, dine in for $15, drive through or carry out $13. Now the drive through menu choices, you can get uh, two brats or a pork steak, along with potato salad, baked beans, slaw, and dessert. And they, they have a hot dog meal, uh, more than likely you know, geared toward the kids, but, you know, adults can eat them too. It's only $5. You get a hot dog, chips, applesauce, and a brownie. And again, that's 11 to 6.30 today. Grace United Methodist Church, 952 North Church Street. That's north of the interstate there behind the uh, car dealers. There's a uh, gospel hootenanny uh, coming up tonight. It will be at the House of Hope Church at 235 North Clark Street. So that's the old Radio Shack building. And we just had Mike and Nancy in here. Now, it'll be at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, a love offering will be collected, and it will be donated to the House of Hope Carl Duff Ministries to help people in need. Uh, so come on out. Uh, again, it's not the original benefit they planned, but they're still going to uh, help out the Carl Duff Ministries. Uh, pack the House of Hope and, and uh, don't make a donation and help out some needy folks around the area. A, an open mic jam session in memory of Larry Laird is coming up on Saturday at the Eagles Small Hall here in Solvent, Acid Mine Road. That'll start at 5 p.m. It's open to the public. Uh, there's, you know, there's no entry. You don't have to pay a cover charge to get in. They do have a cash bar. Uh, some of the confirmed guests include Brad and Matt Keene. James Gruce is going to be there. Jeff Goodbar, Paul Harmon, and uh, Missouri's Most Wanted Outlaw Band. And all musicians are welcome to come and join in. Feel free to bring some shareable snacks. There will be a memorial table set up to honor the deceased Eagles members and uh, bring a picture to display if you have any. For more information, you can call Ron Laird at 636-485-5824, 636-485-5824. And the Fraternal Order of Eagles, uh, area number 3781 in Solvent, is sponsoring the Camp Hope Poker Run. All proceeds will go to Camp Hope. Uh, the mission of Camp Hope is to honor the fallen by helping the wounded. Camp Hope offers all expenses paid adventures and camaraderie for servicemen and women that have given selflessly for our freedoms. 
This will be coming up on Saturday. Registration starts at 11. The ride out is at noon. Entry fee is $20 per vehicle and a card included is $15 by an extra card. Now you'll start from the Solvent Fraternal Order of Eagles Hall at the Eagles Nest there at 1000 Acid Mine Road. The first stop will be the Leslie Depot, then the White Mule Winery, Bogies in Owensville, the Town Tavern in Bourbon, and then come back to the Eagles Nest in Solvent. UTVs, trucks, motorcycles, all welcome. And uh, there will be a cash prize for the best hand. For more information, you can go to www.camphopeusa.org. The Sullivan Encore Music Boosters presenting a music trivia night fundraiser Saturday night at 6 o'clock at the Eagles Hall. And uh, it's uh, $200 for a table up to 10 people or 25 bucks a person. Attendees must be at least 18 years of age or older. They'll have music bingo, a silent auction, and uh, lots more. And um, I hope you can help out. Uh, they'll have some raffles, a live auction, all sorts of things going on. That's on Saturday. Doors open at 6. Trivia starts at 6.30 at the Eagles Hall. Elizabeth LeCamp's Tribute to the Troops of Vietnam Era coming up at the Bourbon Area Community Center at 575 Elm Street in Bourbon on Saturday. The doors open at 1.30. The, uh, they'll present the colors at 3, followed by the beginning of the show. They'll have a memorabilia, a wall of honor, interactive Vietnam map, attendance and raffle prizes, snacks, drinks, and camaraderie. Advanced tickets information, $15 for veterans, $20 for non-vets. All proceeds will go to the St. James Veterans Home Assistance League. And uh, you can get, uh, there's a link there kind of long for credit card orders. Also, you can visit the Bourbon Cafe and Coffee Saloon to get tickets, uh, check or cash only there. If you have any questions, call Francie Rohr at 636-432-9198. 636 432 636-432-9198. Or you can go to www.entertainmentbyelizabeth.com or look for that on Facebook as well. The Elizabeth LeCamps Tribute to the Troops is a nonprofit organization dedicated to honoring Vietnam veterans. There's a benefit for the Eminence Area Volunteer Fire Department coming up on Saturday. Of course, they lost everything at their uh, building burned down. Uh, the Jacks Fork Campground is hosting a benefit on Saturday. They'll have Music, cornhole tournament, silent auction, 50-50 drawing, a dunk booth, cakewalk, pie in the face, snow cones, cotton candy, popcorn, a whole lot more. There's a $15 admission for a kid zone with bounce houses, games, and prizes. All at the Jacks Fork Campground out on Missouri 106 at Eminence. For more information about, uh, about this is going on, it's 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Saturday. You can contact Kaylin Inman at 573-355-7023. And let's see what else is coming up. Uh, the um, Merrimack Community Mission has a, face group, a Facebook group called MCM Online Auction. They'll be conducting a Facebook auction um, with 55 Cardinal bobbleheads and 15 Specialty Cardinals t-shirts. Um, you go to the MCM online auction group, request to join the group, and then participate in the fun Facebook auction. And they'll take bids on those items through Saturday the 13th at 12.01 p.m. So keep that in mind. Uh, what else is coming up? Oh, this is another Saturday event. A mouse races and silent auction uh, to benefit the Paw Stoppers. It's a group that supports the Franklin County Canine Team. Uh, they'll be having this over in Union on Saturday starting at 6 p.m. And it's at 1329 Union Avenue, admission $10. And uh, should be a lot of fun. And, of course, the money raised goes for a good cause. Uh, Blood's, uh, Blood Drive at the Bourbon Community Center at 575 Elm Street. will be on Monday, April the 8th, 2 to 6 p.m. You can go to redcrossblood.org at her bourbon community to schedule an appointment or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. That's 1-800-733-2767. Uh, come and get blood uh, anytime between April the 8th and 28th, and you'll qualify for a $10 e-gift card to a merchant of your choice, plus automatically entered into a chance to win a $7,000 gift card, and there'll be two lucky winners of that. 
You can go to rcblood.org slash spring to get signed up for that. Uh, what else is coming up here? Um, the Missouri Department of Conservation and MU Extension hosting a field day that will focus on forest health and related topics. That will be coming up on Saturday the 13th from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. near Steelville. It is a free event. Participants will meet at a site on private property and will receive specific directions after registration. Uh, subjects covered include the, uh, um, during the workshop portion, will include invasive species, forest pets, pests, that is, and disease, forest management, and wildlife habitat management. The landowner, along with experts from the Department of Conservation and MU Extension, will guide participants through field sites with active forest management activities and demonstrate how practices impact wildlife and forest health. The Department of Conservation will shuttle participants to each tour location. Uh, walking on trails that may feature some uneven terrain will be required. Uh, the uh, Department of Conservation can provide a UTV to assist participants if, ne if needed. A complimentary lunch is also provided. Now registration is required in advance through the MU Extension website. Go to http colon slash slash short dot mdc dot mo dot gov slash 4b2 or you can go to the Phelps County Extension Office at 200 North Main. Uh, they're on the back side of the courthouse. You can contact Sarah Higgins if you have any questions 573-458-6260 573-458-6260 There will be a health fair at the St. James Senior Center at 110 West James Boulevard uh, that will be at um, April 13th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., a free community event designed to encourage healthy lifestyles, prevent and manage disease, and reconnect you to, and connect you to resources. There will be a food truck there with food and drinks available for purchase. They will have uh, three iPads to be given away as door prizes, and you do not have to be present to win, but you got to go by and, and check out the uh, health fair and get registered. And let's see what else we've got going on here in the very near future. Uh, Meadows Arcasa, Ladies' Night Out, Tuesday, April 16th. And uh, doors will open at 5. Drawings begin at 6. $25 includes entry, drawings, and a light meal. It will be held at the Knights of Columbus Hall, an old 66 uh, outside of Cuba. Uh, take Highway 210 toward Route UU and cross the overpass, take a right. And you can see the building over there. Uh, tickets are available from any CASA board member or staff. You need to ask about reserving tables of 8 or 10 or more. Uh, you need to call the CASA office if you need more information. Or CASA, I guess it's probably pronounced. 573-677-2022. That's 573-677-2022. They will have a light meal. There will be vendors such as jewelry, perfume, holiday items, hand quilted items, drawings, candles, silent auction, designer purse auction, bargain corner, and more, and uh, BYOB if desired. Wine will be furnished. All proceeds will go to the Midos Arcasa. New Life of Hope Church at 72 Shamrock Drive in Sullivan having a rummage sale and bake sale April 19th and 20th, May Day until 2 p.m. each day with uh, all the money benefiting their gospel fund. There'll be pulled pork sandwiches, a variety of baked goods, and rummage sale items. And that's uh, that covers the next oh, week or two. Uh, just a quick rundown on some things that are going on around the area. And uh, again, if you have something that you would like to get included on our community bulletin board, again, uh, pretty much similar to what we do with the for sale show, uh, you can text it to us if it's just you know some information. Uh, you can just you know grab your smartphone or whatever phone you've got that you can text with and just uh, text us your information at uh, 573-677-1001. You can take, if you've got a flyer or something like that, you can take a picture of it and include that with your text. Make sure, you know, you give us a location and hours and contact numbers and stuff like that if it's not on the flyer. Um, and you can mail it to us. Uh, that's a uh, the uh, Community Bulletin Board, care of KTUI Radio, P.O. Box 99, Sullivan, Missouri, 63080. Or you can also, again, drop your 
um, community bulletin board information off here at the studios. Uh, we're usually around till uh, around uh, 11.30 noon, um, Monday through Friday, or you can probably drop it off in the tax office and we can get it uh, that way as well. And uh, we'll get that stuff when we, when we get an opportunity. We get to those items on our community bulletin board and let folks know what's uh, going on around the area in the days ahead. Let's see, just trying to make sure I didn't miss out on anything. And looks like, yeah, it looks like I think I got uh, most everything that's coming up here in the in the real near future. There's some several things that are down the road a little ways, but we'll wait to get to those. That'll do it for me today. Uh, just sitting in for Sam while he's at uh, therapy today. Uh, Sam will be back with you on Monday at 6. I'll be doing the news tomorrow uh, for Sports Talk. Uh, Sports Talk, of course, is on 102.1 FM after the 8 o'clock expanded news. I uh, want to wish a happy birthday today to Judy White and uh, Grayson Camp. Grayson's 12 today. On Saturday, Daryl Dunn is going to be 64. Andy Giebler, Wyatt Holt, Tina Emmendorfer, Cindy Martin uh, all celebrating birthdays. On Saturday, Glenn and Gloria Stack celebrating their 61st anniversary. No birthdays or anniversary uh, on Sunday. And again, you can send those birthdays and anniversaries to us by text as well at 573-677-1001. And uh, that will do it for me. Uh, appreciate you listening in uh, to us. Again, like I said, Sam will be back with you coming up on Monday at 6 o'clock. Uh, until then, have a great weekend, everybody. You do something good for yourself. Do something good for somebody else. Stay safe, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Time now to join the Mike Gallagher Show. Made it, and maybe something will happen uh, on uh, Monday. Certainly hope not. Uh, they're busy enough with their lawfare against Donald Trump and their gag orders against Donald Trump. Uh, but hey, wouldn't put it past them. Wouldn't put it past them at all. 800 655 Mike. 800 655 Mike is our number. Uh, one of the things I like to do to my listeners, with my listeners on the Bruce Hooley Show in uh, Columbus on our station 989 The Answer, is I like to update them on things that were in the news and aren't in the news anymore. So do you remember when uh, Ron DeSantis in Florida came up with the uh, Parents' Rights and Education Bill, uh, inaccurately and incessantly called by the left the Don't Say Gay Bill? Disney's going to sue, and Disney you know, was really mad because Ron DeSantis took away their autonomy to manage Disney-owned properties and all that. And, oh, the MSNBC commentators and all the other commentators railed against Ron DeSantis. Uh, well, uh, very quietly this week, I noticed they didn't talk about it on Morning Joe, uh, Disney has uh, dropped all of its litigation against Florida. Winner, 